All right, good morning, everybody, and welcome to another Just got muted, Mal. You just got muted. I got muted. <laughs> am Starting I on? Good. Starting am again, I, Mel. Am I good now? Yeah, you're good. Okay. Uh, welcome, everybody. I'm not going to go over the introduction again. I'm glad to see everybody here, and I hope you're all still safe and still interested. Um, this is the second presentation in understanding the module concept. Uh, we're looking at modules from a very basic level forward, understanding what they are. We'll do a quick review. But before I start, I want to make a correction from the last presentation. Uh, as was pointed out, I have, according to the Color Lab curriculum, transposed the meaning of geographic and true zeros. Uh, when I learned a true zero meant it was true, it takes you right back where you went to, and a geographic zero was something that keeps you in the same fo footprints but moves you around the floor. It changes your geography. Uh, that is incorrect. A geographic zero remains in exactly the same spot and the same uh, paths are, and a true zero is a zero that keeps the same paths are, but it may rotate and flip the dancers like a flip-flop, an eight-chain four, that kind of stuff is a true zero. So I just wanted to make that correction. I have changed it on the uh, presentation sheets, but please make that note, and I do apologize for that. I should be hitting myself because I'm the first one that says always go back and check the data. Okay. So as I said, this is the second part of the training sessions on modules and using modules in calling. Uh, modules are square dance building blocks. They're choreographic building blocks. Each one is different and each one has a specific purpose. Um, that's essentially a very, very basic definition of a module. It's, a, a one, it's two or more movements that are designed to achieve a specific purpose. Callers put modules together to build structures in the same way that children will use blocks and Legos to make houses or make all sorts of different things. Now, um, I make this statement very, 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 very uh, plainly. All callers use modules. Okay? Whether or not they admit it or not, all callers use modules. And they do it to achieve a specific purpose. It might be just changing the orientation. They might be site calling. But if they repeat that same thing and they use that to repeat, essentially that's a module. Not this time for the argument. Okay? So as a... I stress that um, I've had many arguments on that statement. I've yet to find a caller that can prove that they don't. So just remember that definition. Two or more movements designed to achieve a specific purpose. Now I've added to that different definition, the clarification that is intentionally repeatable. Okay, you can site call or you can, you can know your movement mechanics and move people through from form to form to form to form. But if you're constantly repeating that sequence, it, it it has become a module. And in general terms, they take you from one known FASR state to another known FASR state. Regardless of what system you use or what system you choose to master, the use and integration of modules in your calling will assist you in being a better caller. Okay, so a very, very quick review. Um, remember, like individual movements, modules are two different things, but the principle of use is the same. You need to know your body flow and your hand availability at the start of the module, and you need to know your body flow and hand avail availability at the end of the module. Just remember, a module is a combination of movements, something put together to build something bigger collectively than each of its own component parts. Okay, the types of modules that we talked about was the get-in that takes you from a static square to a known FASR state. Uh, for the purposes of these sessions and for newer callers, we're only worried about a corner box and a partner line. That's it. Okay. There's a zero module, which takes you from a FASR state to the same FASR state. So it takes you from a corner box to a corner box, or it takes you from a partner line to a partner line. And within the zero modules, there's the, the subtypes, there's the geographic or the footprint zero, 
There's the true zero, which keeps the footprint, but may move you around the square. There's the inversion module, which keeps the fazar. So it'll maybe a corner box to a corner box, but where you started with the sides on the outside, you may end up with the heads on the outside. It changes the order and the position of the dancers, but does not change the formation. Okay, and you've also got the invert and rotate module, which does the same. It, it changes the order and position of the dancers, but it also moves them around. It can change it. So it might rotate them at an angle, um, swing through, spin the top, pass through, bend the line, slide through, right and left through is like that. It, it, it takes you from a corner box to a corner box, but it inverts the corner box and it rotates it one quarter counterclockwise. Then you have fractional zeros. Fractional zeros are modules that you have to repeat twice or more times, two, three, four, six, whatever. Um, the chicken plucker is the classic example of a fractional zero. Right and left through, dive through, pass through. That's one half of the fraction. Right and left through, dive through, pass through. That's the second half of the fraction and that becomes a zero. The third type, are conversion modules. They take you from a corner box to a partner line or a partner line to a corner box. Uh, I know there's lots of other conversions that will take you from corner box to corner line or corner line to partner box or, or whatever. Uh, for the purpose of understanding the principles and for new callers, I want you to focus on corner box and partner line. It, it will make it much easier for you and you'll learn the rest of it as you go, but you've got to get a good foundation of building blocks to start with. And then there's the resolution module, which is basically what a lot of people call the get out module, which takes you from your known Fazar state to an Alaman left, a right and left grand, a weave the ring, a promenade, uh, or even to home, whatever it is. Um, so for instance, up from a partner line, if I called past the ocean, swing through, and do the recycle with the girls leading, that puts me in order and sequence that I can just call a right and left grand from there. That's a resolution module. Um, there's a full routine module, which is essentially every singing call you do is a full routine module. It takes you from a start to a finish point to home, or some callers like full routine modules for their calling, their warm up sequences and whatnot, so they can assess the floor. It's basically a from start to finish sequence that takes you to home. And they, they're used for workshopping, for <clears throat> if you're focusing a feature movement, if you're using extended applications or, and basically all your singing calls. So the question is, how does all this stuff we're learning about modules, we, we've learned all these different types of modules, how does it go together? It's very, very confusing when you look at it because you've got on the, you've got you as the caller standing up here saying go, you got your square down here and you're saying, okay, well, if I go to partner line, there's a fixed point. Is that a partner line or a corner box? If it's corner box, do I go over here and use this module? Um, where do I go from there? And it can be confusing. It's not. Uh, like anything, if you try and draw a map out, it'll look confusing until you actually understand how each part works. Once you understand that, it's very, very simple. Um, that said, there are five modules and this is, if you learn no modules at all, except these five, you'll do fine. Okay, these are the five base point modules that every caller should memorize. Most callers have memorized it already. And as with the toolbox, they're basic tools that include a pencil, a hammer, a screwdriver, or two screwdrivers, a wrench. With those tools, you can pretty much do anything. Okay, and the basic, the five basic modules are the two geographic zeros, partner line to partner line, pass through, wheel and deal, double pass through, first couple left, next couple go right. I'll, we'll be looking at these on Taminations a little bit later, but I'm just going through this because most of these are, are review. Um, that just takes me from a partner line to a partner line. This is what's called the caller take a breath module in some places because you know it works. This is where a caller can just move the dancers around and see who's where and put them right back where they started from because the partners never change during this sequence. 
There's the corner box module, swing through, boys run, Ferris wheel, centers pass through. That's usually, an, it's called an interaction module. It doesn't do anything, but it keeps those four dancers together other than the Ferris wheel pass through and interacts them with the other side of the square. Now, in the conversion zeros, you see MM. Bill Peters a while ago, a long while ago actually, coined the phrase, the magic module. The magic module is swing through, girls circulate, boys trade, boys run, bend the line. Okay, that is the magic module. And yes, I did specifically say, girls circulate, boys trade, boys run, bend the line. There is a specific reason why the gender is included in that module. It's called the magic module because if I stick a star through on the front and back of it, it then becomes a partner line to a corner box module. If I don't, it's a corner box to a partner line module. If I put a star through and a right on the front and then right, it changes from a, a partner line to a corner line and so on and so on. But the module itself, swing through girls, circulate, boys trade, boys run, bend the line, never changes. One movement on the front and back can convert you to all sorts of different things. That's why it's called the magic module. It's an excellent one to have. It's the ultimate conversion module. The other simple one is the conversion from a partner line to a corner box, which is very, very common. Touch a quarter, all eight circulate, boys run. Okay. And finally, whoops, the chicken plucker. A chicken plucker is a module fraction. Half a chicken plucker moves you to the other side of the square. You can do a little something over there and do the other half of the chicken plucker and bring you back to your corner box. It's, it's a breakup module for using modules. So I get to a corner box, I can do a module. I call half a chicken plucker, I'm with new people. I can call the same module again, it feels different. I can call half the chicken plucker again and, and I'll mind left. That's how that works. Those five simple zeros are a must for every new caller starting out and for every new caller learning how to start pattern. In my opinion, they are a calling foundation skill. So if we look at the module concept in terms of practical applications, if you remember before, I said that all singing calls are essentially modules. So to clarify that, um, they're a module from a static square to a resolution. The resolution is usually to a corner, but it might be sometimes to a right-hand lady. You have to actually look at the singing calls to see where it puts you. Okay. They are often a module from a static square to a known position. Example, a corner box or partner line, or somewhere else where you can swing your corner. The get-in of the singing call for example, head square through might be a single movement that takes you to a corner box. Everything after that head square through is a corner box to a res resolution module. The rest of the singing call might be, depending on the ending formation, if the ending formation is also a corner box, it could be a corner box to a corner box module. And the singing call can be broken down further um, there may be other zeros in it. For instance, a corner box to a corner box, head squ um, square through four, I'm in a corner box, swing through girls circulate, boys trade, boys run, bend the line, I'm in a partner line, so I've got a corner box to partner line module, touch a quarter, all eight circulate, boys run, I'm back in a corner box module, swing your corner, I've got a singing goal. I use that figure because we'll see that in, the, in a little bit. Now sometimes there are even more in there and sometimes there's less. And it is possible to have a singing call that has no fixed points. It's entirely possible to have that, okay? So don't always look on some of those exercises you may be going through, you're looking desperately for that partner line or that corner box and it doesn't exist, okay? So it is possible that it doesn't exist. The idea of analyzing a singing call is to find the fixed points. What I call fixed points are the recognizable common FASR states that you're, you, you as the caller are comfortable with as a starter, corner box, and partner line. So as a beginner, 
limit it to those only and you'll find you'll be a lot better off. Okay, so to put this into practice, what I did is I pulled out one of my call sheets and I found the move, uh, the record Rocky Top because I heard it on the radio. And it had this figure written on it, which I thought was a classic example and why I chose it because you'll probably recognize the modules in it. So you got head square through, four hands around Rocky Top, find that corner, girl swing through, girls circulate, boys will trade and then boys run, bend the line and go. Touch a quarter there, all eight circulate. Boys run, swing, and promenade, go. Works beautifully, flows nice, dancers are moving, they're having a good time, and then if, if you're in Australia for the first time, they start stomping their feet on the floor every time you say it, and it, you go, what the heck was that? It is a classic, fun dance that everybody loves. So when we look at that, we start looking at the figure and saying, okay, I've got to identify the fixed points in that figure. And remember the fixed points that we're looking for are corner box and partner line. So if we start by identifying the fixed points, we've got a static square, head square through takes us to a corner box. Swing through, girls circulate, boys trade, boys run, bend the line. That takes us to a partner line. Touch a quarter, all eight circulate, boys run. Takes us back to a corner box or we can swing our corner. We can also do an element left there if we wanted. So in the most basic of forms, the singing call has given me a get-in movement to a corner box. It's given me a conversion module from a corner box to a partner line. It's given me another conversion module, which is a partner line to a corner box. So you can throw in your, your comments. What other modules does this sequence give me? Anybody? Corner box to corner box by combining two. Combine corner box to corner box. I can go from that corner box. That whole sequence is a corner box to a corner box module. The whole thing's a sequence module, right? It's a full sequence module, correct. The five magic modules? That's a magic module. That's a, a conversion module. A lot of people call this one here, touch a quarter, all eight circulate, boys run a magic module. It's not. Um, it is a good, it's a line to box module, but from a, zero, a partner line, it, it takes you from a partner line to a corner box. But what else is in there? Are there any resolution modules in there? Corner box to corner, that's a resolution. I can call an LMN left there. Partner line to corner, I can call an LMN left there. So there's lots, lots of things in there when you start looking at it. Okay. So this is what you've got in that with two fixed points, corner box and partner line. You got to get in a full sequence. You've got a corner box resolve. You've got a, a corner box to corner box zero, a corner box to a partner line, a partner line to resolve, a partner line to a corner box. And then you've got a second corner box to resolve, which is the Alaman left. That's one simple figure composed of two modules. I wonder what I could build with that, putting those sequences and mixing them up. Okay. So as I said, that's one singing call figure, eight things. Now, these are only limited to corner box and partner line. I specifically avoided the out of sequence formations, the various wave formations, the column formations, all these other kinds of things, because quite frankly, as a new caller, you don't need them yet. You need to know what the formation is, but you do not need to know the FASR state. Most cases they're transition states and they fall into Mel's category of formation Classification, which is two words, who cares? Mel? Yes. Yes? I got, a got a question I thought maybe should ask now because somebody was asking if you can clarify what you mean by a fixed point. Yeah, a fixed point. Um, in the first one, I call a corner box or a partner line fixed points. The reason I call them is if your module is short, 
At the end of that module, you should be in a corner box or a partner line. I call it a fixed point because there you can Alaman left your corner or something with your corner, swing your corner and go back to your partner. Or if you're in partner lines, you can circle left. It's a, a fixed point for fixing the squares. If your modules are short, at every one of those points, you're at a resolution point. So it's a fixed point because you can fix it if something goes wrong. That's just a term or a phrase that I use. Does that answer the question? Yes, thank you. Okay. So you've got to remember that every singing call you know is at the very least two modules. A get into a known position and a known position to a resolve. Um, in some cases, I've got to clarify that. Some are only a static square to a re res resolution, but generally most are two modules. By moving your dolls or your checkers, you're going to see a whole bunch of other formations like a right hand lady box or across the street box. That's what you get when you do head star through pass through, or you might see a lead to the right box and all these other kinds of things. Once you recognize those formations, you will find that your known singing calls are full of modules. They're full of equivalents. They're full of conversions and they're full of zeros. The secret is to analyze your singing calls and make notes of the specific FASR positions and refer to them as what I call fixed points, which is a reference point in the, that the dancers are in. Uh, I, I want to clarify this. As I said earlier, I'm sticking to corner box and partner line because there are literally hundreds of formations and arrangements, well, 79 I believe, <laughs> but when you start adding arrangements and who's where, it, it increases exponentially. But until you get the basics down, don't confuse yourself by trying to learn too much at once. Stick with corner box and partner line. Don't rush it. Uh, William Shakespeare said, wisely and slow, they stumble that run fast. That in short terms is the easiest way to slow down is to rush. Okay, take your time and learn things. Okay, so with practice comes experience and with experience comes definitely more practice. So we had the, um, the fixed points for Rocky Top. We had head square through four, that was a corner box. Swing through girls circulate, boys trade, boys run, bend the line, that was a partner line. Touch a quarter, all eight circulate, boys run, that's a corner box, swing and promenade. So consider the singing call that's on the screen now. We got heads lead right, circle to a line. Go up to the middle and back. Pass through, wheel and deal. Double pass through, first couple go left, next couple go right, right and left through, slide through, pass through. So I'm just going to pull up Taminations. We'll have a quick look at that. Is Taminations on your screen? No. Not yet. Hmm. Not yet. How about now? No? No. Well, okay, we'll do it the old fa we'll do it the old fashioned way. How about now? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it worked so well doing that last time. So if I copy that. Okay, so you guys can all yell out stop, newer callers in particular. Tell me when we get to one of our known fixed points, corner box or partner line. So our first movement is heads lead to the right, circle to the line, before uh, stop yeah. right there. Partner line. There's a fixed point. What 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 is that fixed point? Partner line. Partner line. Okay, next one. Forward and back. Pass through. Wheel and deal. Double pass through. First go left. Next go right. Uh, 
Oh, we're back to our partner line. line. We're back to partner our partner line. line. Okay. And what's about the rest of it? Right and left through, star through, pass through. LMN left. Resolution. LMN left. Unpromenade. <laughs> now, this should all tab. Is the PowerPoint back up? Yes. 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 Don't know why it didn't work before. So there's really two basic fixed points. Okay. Cor there's no corner box, is there? No, but there are two partner lines and we did see them. Okay. So this, this is how I would analyze that singing call up there. Heads lead to the right. Okay, that's a lead to the right box. Do I care about that? Maybe later on, I'll keep that one in mind, but not right now. Circuit little line, partner line. Do I care about that one? Yes, that's a get in from a static square to a partner line. I like that one. Pass through, wheel and deal, double pass through. What formation am I in? What sequence am I in? What area am I? I honestly don't care. Double pass through, I'm in a completed double pass through. I honestly don't care. It's not one of my fixed points. First couple left, next couple right. Yep, I like that one. That takes me from a partner line up here to a partner line down here. Right and left through, well, that's a partner line out of sequence. I'm not gonna worry about that. Star through, box four, four, or partner box. Ooh, eh, no, don't care about that one yet either. Pass through to the corner from a trade by position. I don't care. However, that is a corner. It's good for an LMN left. So what modules have I got in this sequence? Yeah, get it. Yeah, start to a partner line, partner line to partner line, partner line to resolve, start to resolve. Yeah, a full sequence module. A get into a partner line. Another longer get into a partner line. A partner line to a partner line. A partner line to a resolve. Another partner line to a resolve. Okay. So about eight modules, and you, and you definitely found them all. The, the issue is keep, keep yourself in, in those two simple box and line formations, corner box and part and line. The reality is that at this point, it's best not to even try and figure out what all those other formations are and what they mean and everything else. You're familiar with the formation, you're familiar with the movements, you're familiar with your modules that you do, but you're not worried about where each point takes you in the module, only that the dancers can dance smoothly. This is where the kiss factor comes into play. Keep it simple. Keep them short and simple. If you try to learn too much too fast, you're going to overload and shut yourself down. So trust me on that. We've all been there. It's better to take progress by taking one small step and building a staircase of knowledge. So that's what all these numbers are for. One figure, two modules. I can do a get in plus one module. I got three different systems. I got four different. How many different sequences can you put together with, you know, we've got to number six here and we've got eight modules to play with and two singing calls. If I take that up to eight, how many different sequences can I put together without repeating myself? A lot. Yeah, so when we look at those, we look at those two singing calls. We've identified the get-ins, head square through, swing through, girl circulate, etc. We've looked at the next singing call. Those are the two full sequences. Oops. Static square to a corner box. We have a movement get in to a corner box. We have a movement get into a partner line. We have a corner box to a corner box module. That's the full sequence. We've got a corner box to a partner line module. There's the magic module. We've got a partner line to a corner box module. We've got a partner line to a partner line module. 
We've got a partner line to a resolve, and we've got a corner box to a resolve. How many different sequences do you think you could put together in a pattern without repeating the same combination of flows? If we focus only on those six modules and two simple thinking calls, there's a number of different modules in your repertoire. Okay, and that, that's all, all of them. So there's so many different modules already that you have already memorized. Okay, you know a lot more than you think you do. Most of you know at least three singing calls. You know the figures off by heart, but you probably never looked at them in that depth. You've got so many different modules all already memorized that if you take the time, you can find them and you can find little sequences that you can put together out of stuff that you already know. You know how the sequences go, you know how they fit together. And from there, what that means is anytime you get to a corner box, you can call a standard corner box to corner box module, or you can convert it to a, uh, you know, or you can do an eight chain through or an eight chain four and flip the square, you know your movement mechanics and you know modules. Anytime you get to a partner line means you can use a partner line module. Anytime you're in a partner line or a corner box, you can flip forth, flip flop back and forth from one to the other by using one of the conversion modules. And if you use the conversion module, what you can do is at any time, convert from a partner line to a corner box and do a corner box resolution do a corner box to a corner box module, or you can just call Alaman left. As long as you're watching your hand flow, that is. So ask yourself, how many singing calls do you have memorized, and have you ever actually looked at them in that way? If you break all those singing calls down into little Lego groups, you're going to find that you can build all sorts of things in all sorts of different ways. You've got lots and lots of structure. So what we're going to do here is we're going to try and do a little bit of practice. Okay, so I'm going to look at these singing calls. I've identified the fixed points. We're going to insert modules at the fixed points, back and forth, make some sequence changes, and, and all of that other kind of stuff. And for that, I'm going to need Taminations. And Taminations is not up. Why doesn't Taminations want to come up? It was coming up, Mel. Yeah, it was up there. Oh, it didn't. That's it. OK. OK, so we're going to take this singing call here. Uh, paste. Oh, it's not going to play. Why are you not going to play? Okay, so we're gonna take this singing call. Heads touch a quarter, centers walk and dodge. Touch a quarter, walk and dodge. Reverse wheel around, left touch a quarter. Circulate, girls run, slide through, right and left through, Dixie style to a wave, boys cross run, boys run, promenade. This would be a figure that you would probably be using on a very, very fast pickup, fun, hashy type floor that we're going on their heads, touch quarter centers, walking, and so on and so on and so forth to get to where you want to go. It's a lot of material. It's a lot of fast talking. It makes the dancers really have to listen. Not something you want for a nice, relaxing, slow tip, but something that you might want for a big pickup tip. It's not a difficult module, but you've got that memorized or you've got the singing call sheet in front of you. Let's look and see what's in here. So heads touch a quarter. Are we anywhere that we know? For some people, yes, but do we really care about this formation? It's not a partner box, a partner line. It's not a corner box, so we ignore it. Touch a quarter, walk and dodge. Reverse wheel around. What's that? Partner line. Partner line. Partner line. So we just mark that on our sheet, partner line. In this part right here, I can introduce any partner line to partner line. I can do pass through wheel and deal double pass through first left next right. Okay, let's continue. 
left touch a quarter, circulate, girls run. It's a corner, corner bomb. Bomb. So I've now got to get into a partner line. I've got to get into a corner box and I've got a partner line to a corner box conversion. Wow. Well, we're not even halfway through the singing call. What's that? Corner line. Okay. Do we work? Do we care about corner lines at this point? Not at all. Later on, when you get experience, you'll start recognizing formations like this, and then you've got a whole new bunch of modules. Don't worry about it until you're ready and you've got the partner line and corner box masters. Okay, so right and left through, Dixie style to a wave. Okay, is that known? Nope. Boys cross run, is that known? No. Yeah, box wave. That's right. That's a corner box. Not a corner box. In an ocean box wave. wave. Okay. So if I was in a corner box and I said step to a wave, yeah. Make sure that you note things like that. Once you get more comfortable, make sure you note things like that because a corner box ocean wave, oh wow. Turn through, reach forward with your left hand, courtesy turn your partner promenade, or all sorts of different things. And in this case, the singing call ends with boys run and promenade. So what I've, is that the PowerPoint back up? He says, hopefully. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So what I've done is I've just identified three fixed points. I know that with the modules I have, those five basic modules, I can insert a partner line module there, any partner line, partner line to partner line or a partner line to a corner box. I've also got, oh, look at this. Remember this? Touch a quarter, circulate boys run is a conversion from a partner line to a corner box. Left touch a quarter, circulate girls run is a conversion from a partner line to a corner box. Now we're starting to learn about symmetry and we don't even know it. It's the same thing, but if I go left, I have the girls run. If I go right, I have the boys run. And then I've got a corner box to a corner box ocean wave. That's a nice little conversion module. I've got a partner line to a corner box ocean wave. I've got a corner box to a corner box ocean wave. There's lots of stuff that you can fit in there. And even with your five basic modules, if I did this to a partner line and then use my conversion to a corner box, touch a quarter, all eight circulate, boys run, then I could do a half chicken plucker. I could do this. Then I could do the other half of the chicken plucker, right and left through, dive through, pass through, which will take me right back to there. I can convert that back to a partner line with my partner line magic module, and then I can finish the sequence and end with turn through, take your partner promenade. And I haven't done anything. I haven't added anything new. I haven't learned anything new. I've only got those five basic modules and one singing call figure. And I've got so much material that I will run out of music long before I run out of material sequences. And that's only with chains of three modules. Okay. You need to build an entire picture. Identify your fixed points. Use your conversion modules. Use your zero modules. And at any one of these fixed points, you can resolve. If, if they're a bit dodgy, no pun intended, after this reverse wheel around, and I'm in partner lines, what can I call here to get everybody dancing? Tell me left. Tell me left. Yeah. What, what else? Circle left. Circle. circle left. There's nothing wrong with calling circle left from a partner line. And if you call circle left, then you just go into a circle figure and everybody says, oh, wow, I didn't expect that. That was pretty cool. Okay. You can resolve at any fixed point after this girl's run. I'm in a corner box. 
Oh, they, they didn't quite get that girl's run. Uh, what do I call here? Alaman left. Alaman left. Give them a couple seconds and they'll find their partner, promenade home. You can make sequence change, but the beauty of fixed points, you can fix it there, you can fix it there, you can fix it there. Or you can just keep on going with short sequences as long as the dancers want to do. A good builder can build an awful lot with a few basic simple tools. Okay. Now you already know a lot more than you think you do. It just hasn't been pointed out yet. This is one of my favorite quotes. I just can't remember who said it. it was everything you know you know and everything that you know you don't know and everything that you don't know that you know, even though you don't know you know it, will be funneled through you to the dancers and often when you least expect it. And what that basically says is how you're looking at it and how they're looking at it is very different. But everything that you know is going to come out across that mic. And when you're surprised, they're going to be just as surprised as you are. Now, I think that's probably enough on modules. I do have this as a handout as well. So I'm going to cut that, stop the screen share, and let's open the floor up for any questions. Uh, Mark, were any questions sent to you? You guys can un unmute yourselves if you want. I think Mark is gone. Did anybody else have any questions or comments or points? Um, me? Um, are all the handouts online somewhere? Where can we find the handouts? I'm just, go I'm just about to post those into the group chat. And they are, they're also available. You can email me directly. And we also put them on the um, in uh, callers and training and in newbie callers. OK. So if you give me just a second, I'm just trying to find the, the files here. And uh, buh, 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 to everyone file on the computer. Comment, Mel, if I could. Absolutely. Um, it's for the newer cause, it's what they should take what you're doing on screen and put those fixed points in their singing call figures that pop up when, when they're using their music player. Uh, and that will give them clues along the way every time they use their songs. Yeah, good suggestion. I'll take this one. Excellent suggestion. A lot of time when you display your singing call. Um, where is where is the PowerPoint presentation? There is a question in chat now. Uh, okay. Is there a good way to determine when modules can be added consecutively, keeping good body flow and hand availability, other than memorizing the flow and hand availability of each one? Absolutely. When, let's get rid of that PowerPoint presentation here for a second. <coughs> that and bring up. Jody, can you mute? No? Oh, there he is. Okay. Um, the answer is yes, there is. A, a good example, you know, let's just take a simple module here in contaminations. Um, oh, we'll share that. Reset. So if we go Okay, so let's just say this is, uh, what do we got? We do half a chicken plucker. Okay, so if we look at that, do we know what, what hand is free right now?
both hands. I can call a left hand or I can call a right hand movement, correct? But let's say I add on, I've done my half chicken plucker and I want to have a resolution module from this position. So let's go swing through. Boys run. Ferris wheel. And what's your standard get out from here? Square through three. Square through three. Oops. The center square through three. Yep. Okay, so there's a nice little module from a cross the street box to a corner box. But what hand is free? Left hand. The left hand is free. If I call swing through spin the top, it wouldn't be very good dancing, would it? So what you would do is right here, see where it says square through three? Remember what Alan said in your singing calls? A good idea is to write that and highlight it in your singing call on your call sheet. You can do the same thing here. Just put a bracket, LH free, left hand free. Or you can put, when you see that, you, you can do centers left square through. Okay, now by seeing that little highlight thing and the practice that I've done with my modules all the time, I knew that the left hand was free after a square through. So if I change that to left square through because I had both hands free, I now have my right hand free to go and do a module. Or you could do a slide through and a half square through. Yep. I was just coming up to that rod. Oh, that was Rod, wasn't it? I can't see exactly who's chat who's talking there, but that sounded like your voice. It was. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Or when you look at it, this is where um, equivalence, if, if you remember when Daryl uh, Clendenin was talking a while back. He mentioned that there's a lot of equivalence that you can use to disguise what you're doing. So, you know, star through, pass through, and uh, I'm sorry, star through, slide through, star through, pass through, instead of square through, and all these other kinds of things. Or like Rod said, you can do right and left through, star through, you can do right and left through, and pass through, and change it. But if I do square through three, and I'm in a corner box, and I want to call an ocean wave movement, What's a very, very simple fix for a new caller? How about a do, -si -do? There you go. They're expecting a left hand movement. You can even do a left do si do if you wanted, if you wanted a left hand movement. But it ends in facing couples with both hands free. So understanding what hand is free at the end, and if you remember when Daryl was talking right at the beginning, the idea is to know your module has a specific purpose. It takes you from something that's known to something that's known. It's done with a purpose. If your purpose takes you to one hand or the other for body flow, that means as with an individual movement, you have to know what hand is free at the start, what hand is free at the end, and what can I do from there? So if you know that the left hand is free at the end, you know you're looking for a left hand type action. If, you, if it's not, you have to do something to neutralize that or take that out of the equation. So that, that's how you can do it. Making little notations like that is a good way of actually coming in. And it's the same as like what um, Alan Kerr said with your singing calls. Make that little notation. You can make the same little notation like this. I'm just going to do it here, but you do it on your call sheet. You go... Enters left square through three. I don't know that'll play, but no, it won't play. But when you write it down, you can see that your left hand is free. That little indication, and when I do these, I usually put those in red. So that's a warning to me. Yes, Terry. If you're doing a left square through three, your right hand is free. That's yeah. right. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. sorry. I, I meant to write square through three. Square through three. That's okay. 
Just so you know, we're paying attention. Yeah, I, I planned that. That was intentional. <coughs> mm. was um, yeah, so I make a little notation, and when I do it, I usually highlight that in red. That's a little indication to me. I might, if I was doing left square through, I would go left, and I might highlight that in red, or I might bold it just to make it stand out a little more to say left. The, ish, the, the best way of doing this in your call sheets, on your reference sheets, on your module sheets, is the method that works for you. Okay? Not my method. You, you can use mine if you want. Um, there was a, an interesting discussion going on this morning about square dance caller shorthand. Um, I see Barry, you're in there in that mix somewhere. Um, Barry once in a while back when he was learning to call, wrote a whole bunch of shorthand on cue cards and that became sort of a standard that, that started to get developed. Uh, there was also a couple of issues in behind the mic. And what happens is when Barry gave me some of his cue cards, I didn't have a clue what he was, had written down because I didn't understand his shorthand. Mine was different. I personally don't use shorthand anymore. I like to write it all out in long form. Some callers will write uh, H, draw a square, D, D, S, W, T, S, T, or draw a star and a line. Uh, it makes sense to them, then it's perfectly fine. Your reference sheets and your cue cards have to make sense to you. Um, ideally, it would be great if there was a nice standardization because, you know, if, if God forbid something happens to me and all my stuff is left to Guido, Guido gets all my stuff, he can at least read my notes or vice versa. <laughs> um, but that's, that's how I do it. How you do it is what works for you. Does that answer your question? I think that was Greg, was it? Greg, are you still with us? I'm still there. Yeah, yes, it, I mean, basic. I think my interpretation of your answer is, is you should memorize the body flow and the hand availability for your modules. And yep. just like in the call analysis sheet, you're supposed to know the body flow and hand availability at the end of each call. Exactly. So your modules are essentially, if you think of the module as an individual movement, Think of it as, as the sum of its component parts. You need to know where it starts. You need to know the flow through the movement and you need to know the flow or the available flow at the end of the movement. The same with you, you would have with an individual movement. Some, move, some movements have intentional overflow like motivate, so I've been told. Others have awkward flow like walk and dodge. So you have to be careful what you use on them. Uh, one of my notorious veins is I, I grew up with star through flutter wheel, star through Dixie style. That's the way we were taught to dance with the dancing flow. That's not done, done anymore. So I have to go and modify the way I think. So when you do that, you look at different things and you modify your ability as you're developing. So does anybody want to look at maybe a couple of examples and we can go through these and you can see what you want to uh, play with? I did have a recommendation. Yes, go ahead. Uh, well, we're back to that original question about uh, stacking the modules. If you have particular calls that you would like to use, you can go from one module to another to accomplish that particular call. Uh, get, you know, if you want to use a Ferris wheel, you or yeah, or plus call. You're you're in session four now. <laughs> we're only in session two, but you're absolutely correct. If you have modules that have similar figures in them, it's good to have. Right now, all we're looking at is uh, the example, a brand new caller is up doing pattern. This is the singing call they want to use. What can I put in that singing call so I can use the singing call and I can use my basic module for conversion and actually call a pattern call. As, as, as the session on modules go, we're going to be developing that. We're gonna be developing the themes. We're gonna be developing writing your own modules and culminating with writing modules start to finish that will do exactly that. If I have a flutter wheel, which is the example I'm going to use in session five, it'll have a get in module. It'll have a, an open module. It'll have all of the seven modules that are really needed for calling with a focus theme tip for variant choreography. 
but that that's a little bit later session, but you're absolutely correct. Mel, in, yes? in early slides in the presentation, you talked about order and position or order position in regard to the FASA. What, what was meant by order and position? Sorry. Oh, sorry. No, what I was talking about when, when you do a, that, those were the types of modules. One of them is an invert and rotate or an inversion module. So the inversion module will take you, if I have a corner box with the sides on the outside, head square through, an inversion module will invert it. It'll still be in the same Fazar state, a corner box, but I've had the heads on the outside instead of the sides on the outside. And the invert and rotate, of course, will do the same thing, but it'll change the geographic position. Wouldn't that then change the sequence? Um, that's coming up later as well, but yes. What we're looking at is basic modules. Um, but it's the, not for the, the same as it then. The, yeah, the first, the first part was just understanding the types of modules. Now we're going to look at how to use those modules at, as we progress through the sequence. Um, what, what Howard's saying is you have to be really, really careful when you use modules. For instance, if you use an inversion module and you use an invert and rotate, if you're plugging that into a singing call, it doesn't always work. So if I do, if my singing call get in has me with the sides on the outside and it goes to a swing the corner, so if I, and I use an inversion module that takes me into a corner box, the rest of the sequence may not work because it's inverted. It won't take you to the corner. It'll put people out of sequence, but that comes up a little bit later as well. Um, that's just, that's one of the nuances and dangers of modules. And that's why you have to actually understand what they do and where you look at it. It's an excellent point. It's an excellent comment, but it's a little bit later on in the, in the, in the sessions. <laughs> I, I wasn't kidding when I said that we're going right back to the basics of, of looking at modules. Right now we've got five modules, which are your five core modules and your singing call. And the only modules that we're pulling out are the ones from the singing calls. Okay. Uh, Mel, the Howard's point is valid too. In, uh, they, most of those inversions include a technical zero in it, and we should always be wary of technical zeros yeah. of using them in the correct sequence state, yes. That is correct. Uh, no, I think my point was that you said it moved it from one phaser to the same phaser, but it's not the same phaser if the sequence has changed. Oh, yes. Yes, I did. I'm just, I'm just playing that back in my mind. What I said was, uh, yeah, if we do it in an inversion module, it takes you from a corner box to a corner box being the Fazar being a corner box, but you're absolutely correct. Or the Fazar being a partner line, but you're absolutely correct. It will take you from a one P two P to a, uh, a four P one P partner line. The sequence has changed for that particular, it's still a partner line, but it's, it's a different type of line and it may not always work with the rest of your singing call. You have to be very aware. That comes out in the practice when you look at your zeros and you start putting modular sequences together. You learn what does what and you make little notes, invert and rotate. You know, Some of these will work anywhere, some of the technical zeros, others will not work everywhere. And you have to be very aware of that. Is, is that what you're getting at there, Howard? Yeah, it's just that when, with, with, when you said the same phaser, um, from one phaser to the same phaser, it changes it. It changes the, the sequence. Therefore, it can't be the same phaser. Yeah, so absolutely. I would have, I would have said um, the it changes from a corner box to a corner box. Absolutely correct. I'm I'm in total agreement with you. You don't have to argue with me. I'm agreeing with you. <laughs> I'm just trying to clarify what I was saying. Yeah, and, and you're ab you're absolutely correct. A, a Fazar state was probably a bad choice of terms, which is what I used. If it, a technical zero will take me from a corner box to a corner box, but it may not be the exact same corner box and partner line to partner line. Absolutely correct. Yeah. We've, we've still got time. Does anybody want to start looking at a, a couple sequences to see where you can well, take things out? Well, can I just ask a question of Howard? Um, Howard, I missed the ACF presentation the other day. Do you have a copy of that? 
Uh, yes, uh, the Jaden will be uploading that to the ACF website um, in, in the next few days, I believe. But uh, if you want one now, I can send it to you, Alan. I appreciate that. Thanks, Howie. I, I completely missed it, forgot all about it. Sorry about that. Anybody else have any questions? Um, you're gonna have to speak up because I've got two different screens here so I can't see everybody. Yes, um, Mel, I would like to do more sequences if you have the time. Is that, is that Yolanda? Yeah. We've, we've always got time. I put these in. So, um, what I've done is I've, I've just put up a couple of. of uh, and you and you're still recording, are you? Um, are we still recording, Mark? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Good. <laughs> It shows it up in the left-hand top corner that it's recording. Now, I, I can't see okay. the screen. So. Okay. <laughs> okay, so if we look at this, head ladies chain. Sides lead to the right. Maybe not the best choreography, but it works. So that's a box. Okay. Is that a corner box? Um, it's an, an inversion. Right, because now the side the sides are now in the middle. Okay, so it, it's not an Alaman left corner box, so we ignore it. Yeah. Circle to a line. So that's a partner line. Yeah. And and mm -hmm. what your land is doing is going right back to the basics, is recognizing the formation of a box and a line, and now we're getting into the module. Is it a corner box or a partner line? You remember. We said right at the beginning, your two couple zeros or your box zeros or your line zeros, if they are geographic zeros, you can use them in any box or in any line. If they're true zeros, you can use them in any box or in any line. Okay, oh, pass through. Wheel and deal. Zoom. Double pass through. Leaders partner trade. Okay, so now you've got corner box. And now I've got a corner box. So in that full sequence, I've essentially got a static square to a corner box. So if I was to use my modules, I might do something like oops, head ladies chain. And we've got the sides lead to the right. I've got a box. I can use a zero box module. I don't want an invert and rotate. I don't want a technical zero. I want a zero, either geographic or um, true. So somebody give me a little zero. Uh, Mel, before you move, uh, yeah. they could also recognize that they actually have a corner box there uh, with a no, right. No, 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 don't care. You don't care? No, don't care. We're, we're focused solely on a corner box where I can call an Alaman left from or a partner line where I can call a circle left from. Yes, this is a corner box, but I don't care. It's out of sequence. Don't want any out of sequence up. For a new caller, we're not worried about that. We want our paired couples on the outside. So yes, you're right. And as you progress and get more experience, you're going to start recognizing a lot more formations. Corner box. But they, at this point in time, they could also realize that if they square through four and do the right and left through, they've got the same setup. Yep. That's the point I was making, not so much that it's a zero box out of sequence, but just that you're aware of that, yeah. But I'm not worried about that because that's not in my singing call. I'm not calling anything in version site or anything. I've got modules, my five modules, and I've got my singing call figure, and that's what I'm sticking to. How about a simple eight chain four here? Okay, that is a flip-flop, an interaction, so we can do that. We've got that in our toolbox. I'm oh, sorry, I got it. I think this isn't going to work unless I type it all up. Okay, so I can do a true zero, a chain four, you said? And now, barring choreography, now, this is where you have to know, what hand is free? 
Right here. Okay. Both. Which way is my body flow? To the left. Your left hand would be free. You've just done a pull by in the center, haven't you? You have you have mixed uh, body flow for uh, the outsides did a courtesy turn the centers is in a yeah. full body so it's a little bit left. mixed. Yeah, yep. so doing the left turn the the centers are giving a left full body. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, left full body. But the next movement in my singing call is circle to a line. That doesn't really flow that smooth, does it? Eight chain four to a circle to a line. It's possible. Circle to a line. But, but for the outside, it's not really all that comfortable. Okay, but just for the purpose of, okay, I've got a line. Have I got a line module that doesn't do anything? Yes. Or what is it? Back. Okay. Do you remember that I'm a caller, I need a break module? Pass through. Pass through. That's the one. Deal. Deal. Double pass through. First left. Right. First go left. Next go right. First couple left. Uh, maybe it's it, second couple. Sorry? Maybe it's second couple go like uh, go. Is it listed in the abbreviations? <laughs> Hang on right, first two left, next two right. <clears throat> Sorry? Right, first two left, next two right. I know it, it works because I used it earlier. <laughs> now, give me one second here. Don't you have to put that down when you put the double pass through because there's no motion right now. Uh, it, that part doesn't matter. I know it, I know it works in here. Um, Is it not the first couple and then the second couple? Well, not the next couple. Left, uh, trailers go right. Uh, two different lines. I'm sorry? Uh, possible that you uh, write at two different lines. First couple, go left, enter. Uh, it should be first couple, go left, next couple, go right, because that I've used that. Yeah, mind. but if you say leaders, Mel, you need to say trailers. So first, leaders go left, leader couple go left, trailer couple go right. Yeah. There. Took a while to get there. <laughs> I did type that. I don't know why. I just pasted that in because I used that earlier. I just pasted it in and it worked. I don't know why it, it didn't work before. Okay, so I've done that. It's all a matter of spelling. Sorry? It's all a matter of spelling. He wants to come up. Yeah, I, I have no idea why it does this. Okay, so we've done that. Pass through, wheel and deal, double pass through. First couple go left, next couple go right. I've had a look at the dancers. Okay, yep, they're doing fine. I'm watching the dancers. I'm still sticking with my singing call. Let's go back to my singing call. The next movement is pass through, wheel and deal. Okay, I've repeated that. I just did that before, but now I want to do something a little bit different and I have a zoom. Double pass through, leaders. Trade, and I'm in a corner box. I can do an Alaman left here. Now my singing call on this was head ladies chain, sides lead to the right, circle to a line, pass through, wheel and deal, zoom, double pass through, leader straight. That was the singing call. In the pattern, it looks like this, head ladies chain, sides lead to the right, 
four. Circles of the line. Oop, that's a body flow problem. Forward and back. Pass through, wheel and deal. Double pass through. First couple go left, next couple go right. Pass through, wheel and deal. Zoom, double pass through, leader's trade. So I, I've now, and I'm still sitting at my desk with my checkers, I've noticed a body flow problem with that sequence. How can I change that eight chain four circle to a line so it's not so awkwardly dramatic? What can I put in there? Before you do that, Mel, can you just run through the, the bad body flow thing slowly so I can see what you're talking about? Okay, so if I do a head ladies chain. Slow down, can you slow down the dancer speed yeah. from normal to slow? Uh, I'm I'm on normal. Yeah, I can slow it down. Just Let's hit the dance. Just change the dancer speed from normal okay. to slow, please. So we're 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 he's on. Dra and he's dragging the cursor by hand too. That's okay. slow. Okay, so we're now in a box, and we did. It's not a corner box that I can do an Alaman left from. It is a corner box, but it's not. It's a corner box out of sequence. Okay, so I do an eight chain four. Because I have a lot of really, really old dancers, I've got the music on four beats per minute. <laughs> okay, so notice the outside dancers here. The couple number one. Or, sorry, number one man and number three lady. No. John? John, are you there? Yeah, I'm watching. Okay, so he's come from here. To here, backing up, and now he's got to do a circle to a line. So watch what happens. He's backing up. He's got to do a dramatic change of direction there. Let's put that back on normal speed. Okay, so how can I how can I fix that after the eight chain four? If I still want to do a circle to a line, what can I put in there to fix that? Dicey dog. Do -si do. No. Oh. Why not? There's nothing wrong with using a do -si do if you're using it properly. If you're using it to break a momentum, if you're using it to break a flow or to establish a new flow, perfectly good. It's the same as using a balance in a swing through. It's a perfectly legitimate use of a movement. So all I would change on that one so far is put a do si do in there. Okay, put forward and back, not really necessary, but it works. I'm buying myself time. Now I'm looking at the dancers because I want to have a quick glance at my sheet. How did the singing call in? Oh yeah, pass through, wheel and deal, zoom. Double pass through, leader's trade, Alaman left and or Alaman left and promenade. Now, earlier you'd mentioned about uh, just kind of adding to the the doing the right and left through, gear left, Ferris wheel, centers pass through as your little module that could, that you know, from one spot back to the exact same spot. You could have done that after the eight chain four to add some more calls and, and take the flow problem away also. That was you, was it, Rob? Yes. Absolutely correct. Uh, sorry, why did I type zoom there? <laughs> I have no idea. I'm in a corner box. I can do a corner box interactive module. Right and left through, beer left, Ferris wheel, centers, pass through. I could have also done that here. Right and left through, beer left, Ferris wheel, centers, pass through, and brought myself right back to here. And then instead of doing that bit in the middle, gone right back to the singing call. I have not changed anything. I'm using one singing call figure and I'm using just those five modules. And so far we've got one, two, three, four, five different chains, one full sequence here, but five different possible chains. Let's try a different one. Okay, so if we do head square through, here's, here's our singing call, swing through, 
boys run, couple circulate, Ferris wheel, double pass through, leaders trade. Okay, so let's identify our fixed points first off. Head square through. Or box. Or in a box. Okay, so on our sing uh, after the square through, we put in brackets CB or corner box. Swing through. Boys run. Do we know what this formation is other than the two face line? No. Do we care? At this point, no. Ferris wheel. Okay, do we know what this formation is? Yes, double pass, double pass through, but we don't know the, the uh, it's not a corner box, it's not a partner line, we're gonna ignore it. So we do our double pass through, leaders trade. Corner box. Corner box. So remember our modules. So let's reset that and we'll see what we can do for a sequence here. Head square through. In a corner box, somebody give me one of my corner box modules. Let's convert this corner box to a partner line. So the magic module, somebody? Swing through. Who's that? Swing through. Boys run. Girls circulate. Girls circulate. Boys trade. Is trade. Here's where you could say ends or centers if you wanted, but the actual module is girls and boys. Okay, next is boys run. Boys run. Boys run. And the line. line. And the line. Okay, I'm in a line. I want to do a line module or I want to take it back to a corner box module. What do you want to do? You, you guys are the caller, so you're, you're calling, you know your singing call. It's a quarter. Okay, okay it's we're going to take all eight circulate, boys run. We're going to convert it back to a corner box. Order. Oh, the dancers had a little bit of problem with that circulate. I, I've almost lost the square they're fudging. What should I do here? Alvin <laughs> left. Alvin left. Perfect. I don't even have to finish the singing call. Now I want to make it feel different for the dancers. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing, but I'm going to start with signs. Square through. Believe it or not, although this is the same thing, it feels different because they're working at different walls. They're looking at different people. Okay. Okay, I'm in a corner box. Give me a corner box module. Swing through. Boys run. Ferris wheel. Then it's pass through. Perfect. Okay, now I'm going to go back into my singing call. Okay, this is my second figure. I've had them on the floor dancing now for about, oh, a good three minutes. I want to give them a break. So what would be, I'm in a corner box. How about put the magic module in here? I can call an Alaman left here, or I can call swing through and circulate. Centers. Trade. Boys run. Bend the line. Circle left. And I can go right into my middle break without even going home. 
Circle left to an Alamo man left in the Alamo style. Swing through. Swing through again in the right and left grand. Blah, 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 blah. Is everybody beginning to see how these things work? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Let's let's have a look at this one. Okay. So before I start putting dancers, can anybody see any six points in that? Right, right after bend the line. Is that a partner line? Nope. To the courtesy turn. After the courtesy turn. Oh, okay. So what I'm looking at in this is it's it's kind of hard to identify these fixed points. I'm sitting at my computer at my desk. Last last week, the caller at the club I'm dancing at has asked me to do a tip at the end of at the dance at the end of the month. So I'm looking at this, where am I going to identify my partner lines and my quarter boxes? And the answer is at home with my checkers. Mm -hmm. I've got my, I pulled up this singing call record. I want to do this singing call. Uh, I don't know, let's just say this is um, good time Charlie or whatever. Okay, so I'm going to do this singing call. That's the figure in it. Right, I want to look at that figure, so let's go through it. I've got my checkers on the table. I do heads lead to the right, veer to the left. Hmm. Okay. Couple circulate. End the line. That's not a partner line. Oh, pass through, courtesy turn. I could, have done a, I could have done a right and left through there too, couldn't I? But that's, that will, that's what was on the call sheet, so that's what I'm going to leave it as. I now have a partner line, so I have a fixed point. Square through three. All right, sorry, slide through square through three, another curtain. Oops. What do we got there? Partner lines. Partner lines. Right. Okay. Let's see the partner line because it's out of there. sequence. Yeah, let's say they're out of sequence. So we go back and we check at that, and we have slide through, square through three. Yep. And there's my partner line. Yep, absolutely right, out of sequence. So I ignore it. Star through, pass through. Trade by. Hmm. And what was after that? In in the singing call, had an Alaman left and promenade. And that's going to be a very quick promenade because you know we're at fifty one beats. We're here. It's an exact fifty you know fifty one beats to get there because I'm moving up in the promenade. There's no swing. So the first thing I have to look at in my singing call. After this Alaman left, what do I need to do to get back to my partner? Right to a buy. Yeah, or walk by one. Absolutely. So I would make a note on the singing call that I would mark the partner line and I would go walk by one to partner. Right. I now have that. So now let's and see where it takes us. So we've got heads lead right, your left, we'll circulate, and the line, pass through, courtesy turn, and then partner lines. This means I can insert a module. What kind of module do I want to insert here? Any kind, pick one. You've, you've got a limited selection, so I can either convert to a, cor a corner box, or I can do a partner line to a partner line, or I can do a partner line to resolve. Touch a quarter. To? Okay. Touch a quarter. 
Keep going. All eight circulate. All eight circulate. Keep going. Boy, run. <laughs> yep. Okay, I'm now in. Corner box. A corner box. I can do a, a corner box module. If the dancers are having trouble, I can also call an LMN left here. This is a fixed point. I can fix it from here, nice and short with that module. The dancers are doing great, so I want to do something else. What do I want to do? Let's convert it to a partner line, or let's do it as a get out. What do you want to do? Go to a partner line. <laughs> do we want to go back to partner lines and finish the singing call? So let's look, let's look at our magic module. What happens if I do um, R through? Oh, sorry, magic module doesn't work from there. Where am I at? Swing through. We'll circulate. We'll use trade. Always we'll run. Bend the line. Bend the line. I've now gone from corner from partner line to corner box back to partner line. I want to now finish the singing call. I can I can call a circle left from here, can't I? Absolutely. My singing call ended with the uh, square through three. Courtesy turn. I didn't. There was something missing out of that. Undo, undo. It was square um, I thought that I thought it was square through four. Alaman left or slide, no, it was slide through. Slide square. through. Square yeah. through three. Yeah. That was get, getting the left hand free for the courtesy turn. And then if it if it is slide through. Or, Ready by Alaman left. And all I would say there is walk by one to the right and left grand. Yeah. As a patter call, what do you think your dancers would think of dancing this? Bend the line and pass through with a courtesy turn. Touch a quarter. All eight circulate. Boys run around a girl and then swing through. Girls circulate and the boys you are going to trade. Boys run around a girl and then bend the line. Slide through. Square through. Get three quarters round and then courtesy turn her. Slide through. Star through. Pass through. Trade by. Alaman left your corner. Girl number four is getting dizzy. <laughs> By one? Yep. Body so where are we going to determine that? Oh, At our desk. On that courtesy turn, that uh, there's people in the middle be trying to turn the person in front of them. That's why, yep. And those are little notes that you have to make. So if I'm going to be doing the courtesy turn, is it square through three? <coughs> where, where am I here? After the slide. Okay, so. Done a bend the line, slide through, square through three. With the girl beside you, courtesy turn. You've given him the prompt. Or you've given him a be careful, courtesy turn. That, he, that mail is so important that, that the, the, the new callers learn that those, those points right there because yep. uh, if you don't give them that, that heads up and say, "Hey, folks, it's you know, you know, it's, it's a strange courtesy turn. They're gonna, they're gonna miss it. The dancers are in the way, and now you're, you're done." Absolutely, and it is little things like that that where you're going to see it is while you're working with your checkers, while you're looking at contaminations, looking at flow, things that you have to change. 
if I have to put a do side do in there. This is where you make all your notes because we all we've done so far is we've looked at one singing call, we've pulled the modules out of the singing call, we haven't created anything, and we've used our basic five modules. And so far, we're making sequences up that are danceable, flowable, a few things that we have to change a couple of things on. or add a do side do in for body flow, or make a note that I need a left square through to get the right hand free, or a square through three to get to the Alaman left. If it's a module, I'll use a left square through. If it's a get out, I'll use a square through three to the Alaman left. Let's, let's do one more and then we'll just open it up for discussion. So on this one, we've got the singing call. Heads promenade halfway. Come down in the middle and pass the ocean Extend. What formation is that? Zero. Corner box, ocean. A corner box in an ocean wave. I can use that. The cor it's still a corner box, but it's in an ocean wave. So I identify it. Swing through. Spin the top. Slide through. What formation is that? Corner box. Corner box. Corner box. Right and left through. Dive through. Square through three. What formation is that? Corner box. Corner box. Corner box. So I've got three corner boxes in there. I've got to get into a corner box. I've got another get into a corner box. I've got a third get into a corner box. I've got a corner box to a corner box. I've got another corner box to a corner box. I've got a corner box ocean wave to a corner box. I've got a corner box to resolve. I've got another corner box to resolve. And that's all out of one singing call. And I haven't even touched a partner line. So let's have a look at this. And what we want to do, because this is all boxes, let's do this same figure, but we're going to introduce a couple of line things in it. OK, so we'll reset that and we'll go nominate half. Past the ocean, extend. If I want to take that right to a corner box, what could I call instead of extend? Step through. That's it. Either one. Nope, centers. Okay, so where I have extend, I might put a star in my notes and say bracket step through. Now I've got a corner box. If I want to use the extend, and we will, I'm in an ocean wave. Okay, let's take this to a line. Somebody convert this to a line with your known modules. Thanks, Then go on. Roll circulate. I've taken it to a partner line. Remember what I said, stay with partner line and corner boxes to start. We're not into site calling yet. All we're doing is working modules. Okay, so I want to, I've, I've been working boxes. Most of my figures are boxes. Let's do a little bit of line stuff here. Unless I've seen Pass through, wheel and deal, double pass through, somebody finish it. First, First couple go left. First couple go left, comma. Next. Next couple go right. Right. Is it going to work? Oh, look at that. There you go. Okay. Now. Partner lines. We've got partner lines. Remember what we had there on that? It's still part of it. If, if I do touch a quarter, all eight circulate boys run, how do I do it with the girls running? I touch a quarter. Lift. If touch a quarter. Left. All eight circulate. Girls run. Girls run. Girls run. There's my corner box. Okay. Now let's go back to my singing call. I can call a Alaman left here, can't I? 
okay? Yes. Uh, if, if I was having trouble or, you know, I could, I could have changed the sequence at any time. I could have done the circle left after the first couple left, next couple right. But we'll go back into our singing call. Look at that. Let's let's put a zero box module in here, or sorry, a corner box module in here. Eight chain through. Eight chain through. Okay. This allows the caller to right. The dancers are moving. The dancers are going. The dancers are still going. I've had my coffee. I've gone to the bathroom and I'm back. Good. Okay. Let's finish our singing call. So what we've got is our get in from the singing call, a module. Take us to a partner line, a partner line module, a partner line to corner box module, a corner box module from the singing call, an interactive movement, and a get out from the singing call. We put that together. How does this dance? Ah, you slimy little. <laughs> now, Mel. <laughs> Just refresh. Just refresh, Mel. Hit refresh. Yeah, refresh will take me back to zero. Now, I hit the wrong button. Sorry about that, everybody. I, I wrote it down if you want to retype it. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you right now, it flowed quite well. Okay. And the very last one. Okay, so somebody say stop when you get to a recognizable formation that we have. That a lot. That one? Yeah, partner line. Partner line. Corner box. Corner box. Swing through boys trade. Swing through girls trade. Girls run. Girls fold. Can I call an Alaman left from here? Yep. Sure, why not? Okay, so we've got a singing call that has a partner line, a corner box, and then a sort of offset corner box. If I wanted to fix that corner box so that it was in an ocean wave, what would I what would I call? Would I call a swing through from here? Would you call a swing through from here? I would. Yeah, it might be technically doable, but it doesn't look good. Yeah, it's perfectly acceptable. It's actually defined in the definitions in the basic manual. However, a lot of dancers would feel very hesitant at this, especially if they're advanced dancers or challenge dancers because this is an offset position and dancing a basic swing through you say oh wait a minute i'm in offsets different rules apply so if i wanted to fix this so that my c4 dancers could dance this and do a spin the top from here or a swing through from here just call a do si do or do si do make an ocean wave and then call the swing through okay there's lots of ways to fix that so on this on my sheet what i would write would be corner box offset, something like that, okay? I can put in a partner line module anywhere I want. I can change that after the circle line, the touch a quarter circulate boys run to a left touch a quarter circulate girls run and achieve the same thing and then just finish it. I can put in a corner box to corner box module, right and left through, veer left Ferris wheel centers pass through and go right into the swing through boys trade, swing through girls trade. 
I can mix and match all sorts of different things there. When I have that, I have ding, ding, ding. So you should be able to see what I mean. Yep. So on the left side, I've got in red. That's that's for putting in detaminations. On the right side, I've got oh, circle to a line, partner line, corner box, corner box question mark offset. It's not really a corner box, but it's something that tells me that at a basic or mainstream level, I can play with it and I can work with the dancers on it. And these are all part of the notes. And they're included in that handout, which, which I've attached. What I've seen in that, on that, your corner box offset. Yeah. Uh, I don't dance advanced or anything, but down at the basic and mainstream level, when they get in that situation there, they tend to adjust. Yep. A one side ends up, they end up, they adjust, but they adjust where both waves are out far apart from each other. Yep. And that, that's why I was saying you make a note on that because as long as you're telling the dancers what you want them to do and they understand it, at basic mainstream, you can just say, Alaman left, back to the partner right and left brand. It'll work beautifully. Or you can say, do side do, make an ocean wave. They will automatically adjust to that ocean wave. From there, swing through, boys run, Ferris wheel, centers pass through. They've now fixed any offset that you have there. Keeping it nice and simple. And you notice a lot of these flows, they have a lot of motion and interaction with the square, a lot of wind in your face type activity or a lot of wind in your face type movement, which is really what you want to get the dancers doing at this level. They're not hard, but I've taken, and the only things I have taken on that, all of those choreographic sequences that we've done so far is a singing call and one of those five modules. Partner line to partner line, corner box to corner box, partner line to corner box, corner box to partner line, and the chicken plucker. And we can make all sorts of sequences. Now, think about this as not from an experienced caller point of view, but think about this from a brand new caller point of view. I want to make sure that they can do the figures in my singing call properly. Great. So I identified the fixed points. They're going to be dancing the movements in the singing call, and they're going to be dancing, and they're going to be moving around the floor, and they're going to be interacting, and they're going to be coming back. I've done this twice for the heads. I can do this twice for the sides. It's going to feel different. I can do a, a bit of an interaction in the middle with a, a circle left type activity. I can do an opener. And oh my God, I'm now 12 minutes into my four minute patter call. And that's going to be your biggest problem is running out of music before you run out of choreography. And we haven't introduced anything brand new. We haven't done any of the corner lines or corner boxes out of sequences or anything like that. Very, very simple, basic using modules. Does anybody have any questions? So I'm stop share. There we are. Anyway, the floor is open. It's open for discussion on any top. Whoa. What happened there? Uh, good stuff, Mel, on the uh, especially that uh, offset uh, deal out to the girls' fold that, that you let them know that that's not something the dancers will all uh, accept. So when you point that stuff out, that's really important that, that the new, newer callers realize that. And we, we talked briefly about making a, a reference sheet or writing this stuff down. Remember, at this point, we've left the dance. Uh, you know, I'm a new caller and I've gone to Ron Shooping's Club. Sorry, Rod Shooping's Club, not Ron. Uh, and Rod has said, hey, Mel, you know what? You're learning to call. You're doing good. You've got you know, half a dozen singing calls and you're starting to move the dancers around. I'd like you to call a tip next, next at the end of the month, three weeks from now. Well, gee, thanks, Rod. Thank, thanks. For, I'm going to go home and I'm going to look at my singing call. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that singing call up and I'm going to practice the crap out of it. 
felt that I know it down cold. Then I'm going to write down the singing call figure. Then I'm going to look at where are the fixed points in that singing call. Then I'm going to take my five modules. Okay, I've got true modules. I've got zero. I'm going to break it down into bits and pieces and make a sheet up that I can do the singing call. I've got the fixed points marked. Oh, corner box, insert a corner box module, finish the singing call. Oh, partner line, insert a partner line module, finish the singing call. Back to corner box. There we go. Back to corner box. Insert a corner box to partner line, jump down here to the partner line, finish the singing call. And I'm going to practice and practice and practice and practice and practice. I haven't done anything new. I haven't written any new modules, but I've mixed and matched eight different, or sorry, those five modules with the, the one or two fixed points. And I can come up with 30 different repetitive sequences. And then I can double that by just changing, putting the sides in first. I'm not inverting, I'm not rotating, I'm not doing anything else. All I'm doing is that basics up. And next, at the end of the month, when I go back to Rod's club and I call, it's suddenly, wow, where did all that stuff come from? And you know what? I haven't done anything. All I've done is practice that little bit that I know to start to build that foundation on. And the cool part about that is the dancers will be successful. They will enjoy what you do and you will leave a good impression be, not only to me, but to the dancers, and it'll give you confidence to come back and do it again. So as I said, there is so much more to modules. I mean, I, I can't express how much more there is to modules. It's okay, you don't need to. <laughs> but um, we're, only, we're only at session two, which is the base introduction. And that's all we're looking at right now is we've, we've looked at what are modules, what are the types of modules. Now we're looking at how to actually start using them. And, so, we're, and we're still not even picking up the microphone. We're still at the understanding what my singing call figure does and understanding what my five modules do. And we're in the preparation and practice and, and analysis stage. I've got about a week of homework and a week of practice to get ready for this first bit and after that, oh my God, I've only got two weeks to get ready for the tip. Well, thankfully, we've still got three other sessions to go through that'll take us to that point. I think my biggest thing is um, going between the modules is to make sure my hand availability. I, I, my dolls don't have hands, so I don't have to worry about that. But I need to spend more time thinking about what's hand available, what hand we just get through doing. Mm -hmm. And, and as was, I think it was Alan Kerr that brought that one up, says, how, how do you mark it? And somebody says, how do you mark hand availability? I think was your question, John. You make a notation. If you're doing it on a computer, what I do is I put bracket LH free or left hand free. Close bracket. I highlight it. I put it in red and I bold it so it sticks out for me. If I have um, a flutter wheel that has the girl, or sorry, the boys, it's a half sachet flutter wheel, and I've got the boys going in. I'll put bracket boys in, in red, next to it on my sheet, so that I have a visual reference that tells me that's a little bit different. So I can prompt the dancers if necessary. What you have to find is a system that works for you. Um, some of you use your own shorthand. That's great if it works for you. The ideal is be consistent. You've got to do it the same way every time, otherwise you'll confuse yourself. That's that personally, that's why I write everything out longhand. I don't like using abbreviations. I don't like using symbols. I write it out one movement per line in longhand, unless I have to change something because I don't have enough room in the paper. I might put L swing through and I'll have that L bolded so it stands out to me. What works for you is what works, and that's what you have to determine for yourself. So, Mel, how does this apply to the virtual stuff that's happening now? Because they're saying they have to totally revamp everything in order to accommodate that. There, well, the, I, I've watched probably about a dozen of these virtual sessions. There are some callers that are doing one couple calling which they're actually trying to call to one couple and then they're saying with the pretend person. So it's a phantom one couple calling. 
it, it's not one couple calling. What they're doing is they're doing two couple calling with, with a phantom couple on the other side. Two couple calling is the same as two couple calling. So let's, I'll, I'll show that to you if you want it. Um, Because that's what I'm dancing at the moment. Okay, so I've got, I've got one couple here. Okay, I've got one couple, the black don't exist. So all, all they're doing is, is, it's a form of isolated site or two couple calling, they might call pass through, they might call pass through partner trade. Well, with, with, can you do actually do that pass through? No, because there's nobody. So you, they, when they call it, they'd say with the phantoms in front or with a couple in front, pass through, do a partner trade. Um, with the ones in front of you or with the phantoms in front, right and left through. Do so do. Swing through. Oh, wait a minute. That means I got to turn half the right with nobody, and the centers have to turn half the left with nobody. Boys run. Deal and deal. Okay, and you're just making it up with the phantoms, the black dancers, the phantom dancers. And if you really want to have fun, you can do this. Uh, And you can dance an entire square like this. That takes a lot more energy and a lot more work. So you have to really work on your part and the callers have to work on their part. And when they're doing this, unless they are exceptional, exceptional callers or exceptional mental image callers, which I am not, I can guarantee you they probably got their material written out. Okay. One of the things that I am hoping and I oh it, it would be absolutely wonderful if it happens is I uh, there's probably about in the neighborhood of four to five virtual square dances a day happening around the world. Um, with that many dancers dancing, wouldn't it be great be great if all the dancers when they get back know their formations, know their positions, know exactly where they're supposed to be at all times when you call and know how to adjust and recognize where their position and in the square and what formation they're they're in. Mm. Luck with that wish. It mm. would be absolutely marvelous. The downside is if it does happen, which it looks like it is happening in a lot of cases, they're going to know their formation management a lot better than you as the caller if you don't do your homework. So callers, we got work to do. Does that answer your question, Yolanda? I think so. It's just that since I'm doing virtual dancing at the moment, it will be nice, nice to incorporate what we're talking about in the, so that's what I was, yeah. Generally, if you're doing virtual dancing, your two options are doing it as a square or doing it as two couples. Yeah. If you've got two couples together, you work heads and sides and then you work phantoms on the outside and you work boxes. But, but, are, there, but are there places where you can find two couple stuff? Um, there are a lot Tony of reasons. Collingwood? Um, Pardon me? Tony what Collingwood side? On the which? Tony Collingwood. Yeah. I've Tony, never heard of Eagles, that. Yeah, you, he's got everything Tony, from mainstream yeah, up to A's. Resources. So Tony what? Collingwood. Collingwood? Collingwood? Yep. Collingwood. C-O-W-L. So instead of Hollywood, Collingwood? <laughs> Okay. E O W L I N G. So C A L L I N G W O D. T O. T Calling Tood? Calling Wood. I've just I've just put on chat. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, I think it's I think his name is uh with with uh, N G, not just uh I, I think it's uh, calling and not not call in, isn't it? Wood? 
Yes. Oh, I thought it was. Is it? Yeah, calling wood. So you just put that into uh, into Google. Yeah. Okay. And he's got everything from basics up. I'm I'm not sure how far. C three I C three A I think. I've never heard of them before. Okay. It's really good. Melbourne uses it a lot for their sea dancers because they haven't got a set, so they use it all the time. Yeah, there, there's a link to the website. Um, Tony's in the U UK. Yeah. And and the group is called the Pace Setters. But there's a link to his website, and from there it says um, to access the website, you got to provide an email address. He sends out group wide notifications uh, by single email, um, and the website features two couple square dance material in mp3 file and text format from mainstream through to challenge level three and tony is more than willing to share his stuff with people yeah. oh, so yolanda another thing that you can do is watch the videos of the, the dances and you'll see that they actually have two couple modules like two couple get ins two couple get, you know, get out and uh you know see what see what dances well and then break it down just the way Mel is explaining. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. You know, but it's, it's like, okay, I wonder if it was written down somewhere too. There's also this. Oh, okay. Now on CedarNet, you've got a lot of two couple zeros. Yeah. So if we look at basic zeros, you can... And you've got also, I believe, yeah, two couple facing couples. So if I want to work chain down the line. Okay. So I don't have to reinvent the wheel. <laughs> you don't have to. Okay. But when you're working two couples, if you remember, we talked about, about five or six sessions back on isolated site where you've got head square through corner box, you take a snapshot, you want to get them dancers back to that exact same footprint. Every isolated site module that you do with two couples is a two couple zero. Every one of those you can do with, you know, two couple virtual dances. Most of the, uh, most of the virtual uh, dances that I've seen are the callers just calling two couple material the, the 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 only thing that's and so it's not hard for him that it's hard for the dancers because they typically only have one actual person or two actual people you know in the room that are that are trying to do it and they're they're trying to do it with uh with phantoms but and you don't need to involve it let's say you're calling as usual you're calling it to the heads and you don't need to involve any sides at all just just calling you know Two couple of material just to you know just to the heads the whole time, uh, and uh, just having the dancers have to keep track of the fact that there's the the other heads are right in front of them or wherever you know as as they dance with them uh, that's hard enough and it seems like uh, most dancers I mean there's a lot of people doing this but there's a lot more people not doing it because it's too hard they they try it once and and I and I like it. A, a, a surprising uh, number of uh, people uh, do it, but they're making mistakes constantly yeah. while, while they're doing it. So it's 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 really quite a challenge for most, uh, much more than you might think. It's a big challenge for the for the dancers. I found when I started doing it, the best way was to drop a level or two. Like, don't go up and dance C1. Go down, dance mainstream or plus something that you're used to. And then gradually go up a level to get so you get used to dancing two couple with without having the complication of concentrating too much. Yeah. Callers that will have the biggest advantage with that experience callers are ones that actually use things like billion circle in their calling because they're used to doing two couple routines. It's just a matter of watching them rather than thinking about what it is I'm going to do. They know a lot more than they think they do. The danger in two couple calling is a lot of callers will shy away from it and a lot of them shy away from virtual dancing because they can't put the two couple calling in their cedar net in their CSDS in their SD or in their um, Taminations programs because you have to use a lot of asymmetrical material. 
you know, like couple number one, do a half sachet, and then you work from there. It doesn't work so much with all of these programs because they're designed with specific computer coding in mind for a standard boy-girl formation. So that's why your checkers do come in handy. And as Chris said, a lot of times you'll watch this, there's a lot of things that are being done wrong um, that can create bad habits. Keep it simple and build from there. It's the same thing. Um, Barry Watson just put a note in the chat. Uh, he's got a link to uh, an article that was in Behind the Mic, which was on the website December 2016. It was 52 years ago. Um, and he, he started his own shorthand, which was picked up by somebody, which was picked up by another, as well as color coding index cards. Uh, if you're looking for somebody to blame for how we do all this at the start and make these little cue sheet cue cards, Barry's got a great story about how it came about and how it got developed. Um, but the link to those standardized shorthands that were the start used by Hilton is on the chat screen in, in the um, shared screen. Okay. So now how do I save that? If I can, I know I can save the chat, but then do I still have the links or do I just type them back in? Yeah. What I would do is if you're doing that, either write it down or right click and cop or sorry, left click, copy it and paste it on a word document. Okay. So um, Mel, I just wanted to say, so we're, so Greg and I are actually uh, uh, speaking to Chris's point. We're teaching a group of local dancers. Mm -hmm. We're dancing over Zoom, you know, and over, oh, oh, I'm sorry, I was thinking of the movement. Yeah, over Zoom, yes, okay. And, uh, and, you know, so that it's really almost like, teaching, you know, the calls all over again. If you have you're, to you're teaching brand new dancers that have never danced before. Teaching, we're teaching experienced dancers. Oh, how to dance with phantoms. It is a great exercise. And uh, I'll bet you you're having full of challenges trying to explain who's where. Yes. Uh, with, the pers with the phantom person in front of you, um, which way, you know, and, and they'll be going all over the ways. Because when you're dancing with phantoms, it's very, very easy and very common to shortcut what you want to do. If the caller calls promenade, you'll take two steps and get back home instead of taking all eight steps to go around. Um, and you adjust when he says home, oh, you're out of place. And you just shuffle over. You could have been right. You could have been wrong. You don't really fix it. You've taken a bite of a big pie. <laughs> And I wish you all the best of luck. It's, it's the, now it's the only way for, for us in the U.S. to be calling. Yeah. And the other, I guess the other thing for anyone who, for people who are interested is that you have to learn how to use helper words. Yes, very much so. so I was, going to, I was yeah. going to say, if you have a look at Et when she's calling Zoom, she's very good at explaining, right, the boys are in front, the girls are in front, or where everyone is. And it's really helpful, especially if you've got three invisible dancers. Um, you keep track yourself, but sometimes you, you don't know if you're in a wave or um, in a line. So your hand holds when you're doing Zoom is important too, to help you with that. Yeah. And I know um, Denise Carbonell has been doing a number of these uh, sessions on. I'm not exactly sure where you can find it, but she, she lists what her sessions are. And she's had a lot of uh, really good callers come in to do that. Uh, as guest callers, and, they, and they're actually just treating it as an open dance, an open virtual dance, where they're doing this kind of stuff, and you can make a donation to our PayPal if you, if you, if you want to participate, and there's a lot of dancers that are participating in this around the world. For callers, um, oh, thanks, K Karen's posted the, the Facebook group, yeah. which is where it's found. Uh, for callers, it used to be an exercise that we used to do in our callers associations. I don't know what your local associations are like, but usually you take eight callers in a room and you get them in a square. And then you'd move them in different places around the room and you'd have eight squares with one dancer in each square. And then you'd call a tip. And basically you're dancing your part but trying to keep track, not of who's where, where you are, but of the eight phantom dancers. And, or sorry, of the seven phantom dancers and you. It's a good exercise. Uh, I used to do it all the time when I got um, new records 
new pad of records, uh, you know, especially the two couple A1 stuff, to, to actually stand up and dance it. When you do your singing calls, I always recommend stand up and dance it from both sides and heads positions. When you do your, your modules, stand up and walk yourself through it just to see where the flow is. Over exaggerate your hand action so that you know it. a right hand's free, a left hand's free. It'll give you a different feel than you'll get with just your checkers. And and do it for both parts. Do the do the man's part and the woman's part too. Absolutely. Well, the the woman's part in most cases for male callers is this. <laughs> <laughs> and for men callers when women call it, it's this. <laughs> I got a new chair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there is a reason for it. Okay. It, but it, it is actually true. Men tend to think about the male flow in choreography. And unless something is really blatant and jumps out, like two women together are screwing themselves into a circle. Um, it doesn't jump out. And it's usually not both women. It's usually one woman, which will be turning around. And for women calling, it's usually one man that will be going around in a circle. So uh, what Chris says is dance it for both male and female, but also dance it for both heads and sides, because it does make a difference. It's a, it's a good opportunity to practice the other part. Yeah. Anyway, the floor is open for discussion. Um, like I said, there are a lot of topics. I, I'm talking about modules. Um, Howard mentioned the ACF presentation on modules. He did one the other night. The class session did one on modules as well. Um, I'm doing five sessions on modules and I'm going right back step by step through the process. Uh, that's, I was asked to do that, so that's what I'm doing. Um, there's material on abbreviations, definitions, leadership, uh, flow modules, resolutions, teaching, all sorts of different things on these different presentations and the different training sessions. Um, Don Beck has done mental imaging. A lot of these callers that have presented have made themselves available for private tutoring if you want to explore those things. Kip Garvey is doing that. We hope to get uh, a number of callers in here. I'm hoping to get Daryl Clendenin up here to talk about things, um, looking at the different aspects and keeping the flow. He's actually written a, uh, a series that a few people have asked him about, which was mental imaging, tracking the ladies. Uh, he and Don have been talking. And so that's also posted on Facebook. It, it might be worth a look, especially for lady callers, because some of you like to track the ladies, mm -hmm. just your aspect of looking at it. We have a unique opportunity with this coronavirus situation which I hope doesn't disappear after we all get back into our real lives. It may be toned down in the pace, but I hope it continues. There has been more discussion about caller training and caller development at every stage since this happened, that the biggest thing that has come out is we realize that as callers, as experienced callers, as teachers, as mentors, we have been sorely lax and lazy for the last 20, 30 years in developing new callers. We've been pushing the wrong agendas to get people fast and furious. We've been catering to an aging society without worrying about keeping the longevity of the system in favor of keeping ourselves behind the mic and employed. And it's come back to bite us on the backside. Right now, we're, we've got a unique opportunity of developing callers, developing skills and getting material out there that should be out there all the time and looked at. Um, a perfect example today was um, Janet, is Janet still with us? No. Janet gave a presentation in Don Beck's sessions about her call analysis sheet. Now it goes into detail that most call analysis sheets don't go into. We looked at the movement swing through. The actual presentation was about 15 minutes on the call sheet. Then we started to fill it out looking at swing through. Two hours later, after the meeting was ended, we're still discussing the call analysis sheet. And callers are saying, I'm looking at that from a different perspective. I never thought about that. Oh, you know, that, that would be good to consider that. Hey, I could really expand this aspect. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that that call analysis sheet was better or worse. It works for Janet. It may not work for you. 
but it gets callers talking about calling, thinking about the dancers as the priority. And that's what we need to get our focus back to. Okay. Floor is open. Okay, so I, I closed everything off and I opened my, a couple of Word documents, right? So I can copy and paste it into this. Sorry, I'm, I'm learning computer skills. Um, so how, you said left click on it, but then it doesn't, yeah. it takes me, it takes yeah. me to the, it takes me to the site, but it doesn't yeah. let me. How to highlight text. Oh yeah, okay. okay. So highlight it. Okay. And then right click on it. Right click. And, and then copy. Have copy or select all, you can copy. Okay. And then you can paste and then go to your Word document paste. Or if you really want to be lazy, you can go select all, that'll select all the text, right click and copy and you'll copy the whole text. Okay. And that'll have all the links and all the comments there. Okay. A couple of people uh, earlier and whatever were asking about the, uh, if there was a way to get the chat transcript and, and the answer is it might be uh, available from the same place that you get the video. If you do the, um, uh, if you, if you turn on the feature on your own zoom where, where you record it just on your end, um, you get the, uh, you, you get the complete package when you're done, you get the video and you get the audio and you get all the text, uh, and, and everything. Yeah, we said we said that at the at the beginning. If you want to record, sorry. I'll turn this one off if you're putting it on. Oh, sorry, that's Ross in the background. Okay, okay. Yeah. This is now my document won't close, so, but that's okay. Okay, uh, Yolanda. Yeah. Can you go to your chat window? The three dots down at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Just save the chat. Yeah. Save the chat, and then it, and then after you save it. It comes up with it highlights like a little greenish color or something. It says okay. chat saved and then it says show in folder. Okay, just hold down though. I, I was copying and pasting into my Word document and now my Word document is sort of frozen. It won't close or anything. <laughs> so I can't get back into Zoom. Uh, Mark, but it's hit uh, escape. Yeah. What, what, what I would do, Mark, is um, if, you, if you're able to copy and paste the chat, send her an email, but also on that, send a, a tutorial thing, because this could take about 20 minutes to go through that walking yeah. the computer thing. No, the, the only and, thing is now, how do I get back to Zoom? Uh, we see you. You're in oh. Zoom. Okay, but I can't see you guys anymore, and all I have- At the bottom of your screen, you should have a little camera icon. No, no, she's not. No, no, no. It's it's Zoom. so. This is over top of my Zoom at the moment. It's it's no, laid no, over no, top. What about it minimizing? Minimize. Oh, minimize. it won't it won't let me minimize it. Just hit escape. Try alternate tab. Pardon me. Try alternate tab, and it should move you through the different screens. Press alt, the alt key. Alt key and, and then tab. tab. Yeah, press them together. Okay. And then you should well, have. Now I have my download file. Okay. Oh, <laughs> it's good. I can. Yeah, I'm. I'm back. <laughs> and then we'll. I'll figure out how to close if, that Mark, one. if you if you want to um, send her a copy of the chat, and then um, also what you were explaining, the three dots on the bottom right, how to yeah, copy that. that. And, and once you once you get that, at another time we can get together and you can actually work okay. it up step by step because this is probably. Yeah, because because I need to work about how to how to use a computer. Yeah, because I've been saving the chat, but I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> I just I, I know it's in my download, but thank you, Karen. Much appreciated. Now um, I, I need to go, but I just want to say thank you. And do we just use the same link for next week, or is it a new link? Uh, no, I have been sending out a new link uh, each week. Okay. Uh, I haven't got it set up uh, virtual. Uh, at the moment uh, so that I can repeat the link uh, something about how I created my account I'm still trying to figure out how to change that because it won't it won't let me set up a recurring meeting but I am working on fixing that so that it's it will be the same link every week I'm trying to get there I just haven't got there yet so I, I will I will post the that. link bye right. everyone okay mm -hmm. bye
Okay. Thank you, everyone. I'm off too. <laughs> okay. Bye, Ross. Bye. Take care. Bye bye, muted Barry. <laughs> okay, Yolanda, I just uploaded the text file with that in it. Oh, thank you. It's in the. So now I, uh, so now I download uh, that? Yes, and then you can open it with on your computer. Okay. Yep. Sorry for getting off track, but I thought if I don't learn how to do this, I keep getting more and more behind. No worries. Everybody has to learn it. I was like that when I was learning as well. I, I just thought if I, 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 I sent you an email that about that um, copy and paste uh, exercise that you sent for us on the PDF because I've never used anything like that and I couldn't find it. So I sent you an email saying that, um, could you email it to me or something? But yeah. Yeah, I, I am if learning. <laughs> you're having trouble with the PDF documents, just send me an email. I can send you the text of like all my speaking notes and everything else in a word okay. format. And like I said, if, if, if you're able to use this stuff, that's why I'm sending out the PowerPoint slides and everything else. Yeah. If you have your own associations or wherever you are, feel free to use the material. Okay. Uh, if you want to modify the material, modify it. Uh, Guido, if you want to switch it over into, into German, feel free to do so. But the only part that's going to be easy is the choreography because that's still in English. But uh... Yeah. Uh, I know there, there's a number of callers that have actually been taking these, th these sessions um, behind the mic. ATS are translated now into Swedish, German, Chinese, uh, Chinese, Japanese, French, and depending on where you are, English. <laughs> uh, well, well, part of it seems to be that I, I went on, I went and called my internet provider, and it turns out part of it is the um, modem is too old, so they're going to send me a new one. Um, and that's what was causing some of the problems. So it wasn't just me. My, it's part of it is the, the, the stuff I'm using. So, um, but this is all brand new to me, right? I've never done PDFs un until we started with the core of it. I'd never heard of Zoom. So it, it, it's nice. I actually like it when I understand what I'm doing. You know, it's just that I have to ask questions. I, I'm, I'm pretty lucky in comparison to most. Uh, whenever I need to know anything about how to work the computer, I, I ask my 11 year old grandson. Yes. Mm. Yes, it's always, it's, I always find it, it's, it's nice when I understand what my wife is doing. I get less. Oh, trouble. that's difficult. Yeah. That's always difficult. Uh, I, I just got what one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen ten volume twenty two on how to understand your wife. Oh, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> so last week I could yeah, click this, on. This is the simple version. <laughs> If you have to read a book, Mel, it's... <laughs> That's the um, version. Okay, so last week I could click, I could download it, and then I could click open file or find in folder, and I could see it. For some reason, this week, my open file button and my find in folder bu buttons aren't working. When you download it, it will save on your computer in your download folder. Yeah. Just go to your download folder, double click it, and then you can save it wherever you want, or you can just copy it and paste it wherever you want, or you can save as and put it into the file or just drag and drop it. There's a number of ways of doing it, but when you hit download, it will download into your download file. After that, it's just a matter of file management. So make yourself a folder that might say Zoom meetings, slide them all in there. That way you'll always know where to go to find each successive. Okay, you, now you're talking about the fact that I know how to create a folder and slide things in. I, un I understand that, Yolanda. <laughs> what, what I'm saying, te teaching computer basics, this is probably not the venue for it. So it, oh. it's something, if, if I can help you with it. No, I but, I, but, but the thing is, I don't even it. know what to ask for it. Okay, and I just, what happened? Did you just do that on your side or did... Nobody's touching your computer. So 
has anybody got any questions or anything? They, oh, I think we just lost Yolanda again. Yeah. No, no, it's no, always you too, guys. Take it easy. Thanks a lot, Mel. Very good. Well done. Cheers, no guys. I'll catch you next week. Yep. Good Cheers, to see you. Say hi to everybody out there. It was again a very thorough presentation. Sorry? I missed that. It was again a very thorough presentation on yeah. uh, this Thanks, part of Mel. the module. Bye. Yeah. Thanks. Take care, Jeff. Like I said, I, I'm what I'm trying to do, what I was asked was, uh, can I do something on modules for brand new callers to walk us how to use these things from start to finish? And what I found in all the research with all the new callers that I was talking to was, they get modules. Well, here's a module. Here's a here's a corner box. Here's your five types of modules. You got your true modules. You got your invert and rotate. You got your geographic. You got this. You got that. And you just create a module. You write it. It does this, and then you just plug it in whenever you have that. And there you go. And you're given a piece, of, you know, a one one page sheet of paper. And now you know everything you need to know about modules. And modules are so much more complicated than that because they are a base base foundation skill that I thought what I do is I take that 20 or 30 minute session on modules and I would expand it step by step through the learning process. Um, and as you noted in the comments, like with Rod, oh yeah, but you, you also know, you, you can see that that's a square through, it's a corner box, yeah, but it's a corner box out of sequence. So I could do this, I could get there by calling head square through and a right and left through. Well, yes, you can, but we're not at that stage yet. We're still at the, I haven't even picked up the microphone stage yet. And, and, and that, that's where it goes. So it will all come to make sense as you follow through the sequence. The problem is different people's minds work different ways, especially experienced callers. They have to rein it back and say, I can see a hundred things. Yes, but I want you to only focus on the one. Well, then I was finding that since my learning style is an audio, your presentations are so much better because I can see them and you've got them, you know, it, it makes sense, right? I, it's not, it, it's so much more helpful for me. Yeah, well, I do want to make one caution. Uh, first, like I, I got a lot of compliments on these sessions based on, uh, well, I think Karen summed it up. You've answered a lot of questions that I didn't even know I had about how this process works and step by step with great all that other kind of stuff but i do want to reiterate a caution i'm putting a lot of material out there um the last session and i fully admit it i plagiarized a lot of the singing calls that i did on the worksheets because i just don't have time to do that and record and, and mark everybody's yep. material so i was just taking for granted that hey this worked this flowed um some of them didn't work <laughs> Some of them didn't flow uh, as well as they should have. Uh, and also, as, as was pointed out by a number of callers, you know, I transposed geographic and true zeros. So take that with a grain of salt, use the material, but always, always, always check other people's material before you make it your own. Yeah. But uh, you know, the thing is, like you, you said in your presentation, you've said it before, you don't realize what you already, what you already know. You know, so like last month when you were talking about corner boxes and partner lines and blah, 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 blah. And it was like way over my head. And now this is actually making sense. Yeah. It's yeah. scary, I mean, but it's yeah. making sense. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, like you can plug in different things and it's like, okay, so I can take the magic module. I, I learned my writing and stuff, but you know, that's how I, I so if I write different, um, modules down and I color code my index cards and I have an index cards box and I can go static square to corner box and corner box to partner line and partner line to partner line and partner line to resolve. Then I can plunk those out and learn them one by one, but I have stuff there and then I can just build it. Yep. And, and the ideal is to those five modules that I listed, the partner line to partner line, corner box to corner box, the magic module, the shortcut magic module, and the chicken plucker. Those are five modules that every single caller should learn first. Yeah, those are the, those are the ideal memory modules because with those yeah. five, you can do practically anything. 
But the thing is you've broken it down into, okay, this is what I need to learn first. Instead yeah. of there's this much stuff out there. Now, where, where do I start? That was the first session. Here's yeah. all this crap about modules. The second yeah. session is let's break it down. A singing call is a module. Within your singing call, you have fixed points mm -hmm. and you've got five basic modules. This is how you can mix and match and put them together. The next session, we're going to expand on that. The next session, we're going to expand on even more. And in the final session, we're going to actually talk about building your own modules for variant choreography, uh, which is a session we've already done once, but it was asked for again. Mm -hmm. And that's going to deal with actually writing your own singing call, writing your own modules, start to finish the process. Because if you get through the first four sessions, the process for expanding into extended applications is exactly the same. You don't have to learn anything new in process. The problem with how we've been teaching our dancers and how we've been teaching our callers is we're teaching a start point and an end state and saying, use this to get there, use this to get there, use this to get there. But we're not teaching, here's how you start. Here's how you get this middle part. Here's how this middle part works. Here's how you can use this middle part to get to the next part. Here's how you can use these two parts together to get to your end state. We're missing that whole middle bit. And if, if that's all you learn from here to here, just like your dancers, we teach dancers now so fast, in my opinion, way too fast, mm -hmm. that we've lost the styling of dancing, such as uh, star through Dixie style to an ocean wave is a beautiful flow when you dance it as a dance. But it's now anything after a star through is either a stop action or a forward action. Star through flutter wheel, star through Dixie style is considered bad flow. It was never considered bad flow until we stopped focusing on teaching the dance and the styling and, well, I, 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 and substituted what, it for getting there first. Well, I think from what I'm seeing with some of the classes I've been in, they work, they focus on the footwork, but they ignore the hand flow. Yeah. And, and so if you're not taught that at all, um, and even how the dancers, how they put their hands, you know, like if you do a right through or an element left or whatever, well, what, what that, we that, 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 that isn't taught. So, so if you're not taught that, then you don't understand that flow. And you're also, your dancers don't learn anything about flow well, at it's, all. It's, it's, it's not wrong. It's just, it's been done that way for so long. It's become a convention. Yeah. So it becomes standard. So now it's considered bad flow and that's fine. But we have to keep updated with how things change. But we also teach our dancers now, here's the basic program, here's the mainstream program. Great, you've graduated, now we're going to go to plus. Here's the plus program, right? Now we're gonna unlearn some of those basics so that we can extend the applications of basic and mainstream so you can dance the plus program. But this is getting too complicated, there's more movement. So we're gonna look at the left hand stuff and the different formation stuff, that'll be foundation skills of advanced. So we'll unteach what you've learned and then we'll reteach the basics of advanced. Well, there's something fundamentally wrong when you've got to teach it and unteach it, reteach it, then unteach it again, then reteach it for each different level. If it's taught right the first time, it's taught right the first time and you can build on that for each level. And that applies to our dancers, but that also has to apply to our callers when we're teaching callers. That is very but, but I, I like I like in this session how you showed us, okay, now if the flow is wrong, now this is how you fix it. So we're going from a square through three to a left yeah. um, square it, it, it's right? important. It's, if you if you remember what Daryl Clendenin said, Daryl looks at everything as a module. A module is a movement or a module is something that is designed for a specific purpose, to take you from one place to another place with a specific reason. And he's absolutely correct. When you look at your basic foundation skills, you've got number one is your definite, well, number one is learn how to dance first. Mm -hmm. Now, then you've decided you want to be a caller. Number two in a foundation skill is learning the definitions of the movement. Yeah. That's, that's What does that movement do? In doing that, you have to learn what hand do I start from? What formation do I start from? What does this movement do? Where does it take me? What can I do from here? What's my body flow? What's hand availability? 
That's part of learning the definitions. Then you have to learn movement mechanics. What goes together? What can I string these together so I can go one movement to the next movement to the next movement? I'm still not calling. I'm just seeing what can go together. No. Modules are the same thing. You think of a module. You've already analyzed each movement. So you put two or three movements to get swing through, boys run, bend the line. Okay, there's a module. It, it has a purpose. It takes me from a, a, you know, a facing couples to facing lines. It doesn't matter what it is. It's not a corner box. It's just a module. But I have to know at the start of that, I have to be in facing couples. I've got my right hand free. And it's a standard couple for this to work properly. So I've got to know that. I know the flow on a bend the line. I've got the outside couple is moving forward. The center couple, uh, the center dance, the original center dancer is moving backwards. I have to know that flow. And then I have to decide what can I do from there? I'm in a facing couple. What can I do? What's my flow? What hand is free? The hands that are free are the outside hands in this case. So I have to either do a, for, a movement with a forward action or a release movement. So, and those are the things, you do that for each movement. Well, you do the, exactly the same for each module. What does it want to? Now, if you want to try and get to head scar through, pass through, oh, I'm in a cross the street box. Okay, that's great. Or four ladies chain three quarters. Great, heads lead to the right, star through. Okay, oh, now where am I? Okay, I'm in partner lines. Are they in sequence? Or are they out of sequence? Okay, well, let's see. Well, where are they? Oh, okay, so they're in sequence. That's a way of getting into a partner line. Now, if, if I, but heads lead to the right, oh, is that, that's a partner box. But is that a partner box in sequence? Is that a partner box out of sequence? The reality is, if you're going to get into that detail right at the beginning, you're going to drive yourself absolutely insane. And for many of us, like me, it's a very, very short journey. So what you need to do is pick a point. That's why I say pick corner box and partner line. They're the yeah. two standard, recognizable, easy fix points that almost all foundations of square dancing are built on. Stay there, work with that until you're comfortable. Once you're comfortable with that, then you can start looking at, okay, a corner line. What's a corner line? It means everybody's in line with their corner. How do I get there? Head square through four. Corner box, slide through, ah, corner line. I'm in a line, everybody's got their corner. Now, I'm not going to try any other formation until that. And then once you've got that done and you've got stuff with that, you might look at across the street box. You probably look at that one first because you do it with the chicken plucker. Chicken plucker. But then you work with that long and hard until you're ready for oh, it. Oh, I was going to ask, it is one of those things you don't ask in front of a whole group. Why is a chicken plucker called a chicken plucker? It's the <laughs> rhythm, the rhythm that went through it. It was like plucking a chicken. Do the right one. Uh, maybe it's one. Uh, maybe I'm too much of a city, city girl. I just it's like why is it called a chicken plucker? <laughs> I mean, I understand what a chicken plucker is. You know, the plucking uh, a chicken, but why is it called a chicken plucker? Be because in 1957. Um, a caller, I just forget the name, I was uh, just wrote it up. a sequence called The Chicken Plucker. Uh, and this was based on a, another sequence from 1953 called Little Red Hen. You find these in the Sets in Order yearbooks, oh, okay, um, so which you can find on the internet. Yeah, no, there's, there's actually an article on that in, I think, two issues ago in BTM. I, I, for some reason, I got the name John Vernon, but that doesn't sound right. But he no. was the He's the first one, um, that's not the right name, but he released it on a record. That was the first recorded reference. Yeah, but yeah. see, I, I read that part. I read that part, I think it was in the BTN, about yeah. it being, yeah, that was the first time it was referenced as a chicken plucker, but it didn't say why it was called the chicken plucker. Yeah, well, that's what Guido was just saying. It, the, the well, first it, it, it's it because the red ham thing. Yeah. No, yeah. Uh, in the 1950s. Early 50s. Many, yeah. many sequences yeah. had names. Okay. And this, this routine was named Chicken Plucker. Okay. Uh, it was danced a little bit different than we do it today, but the, it, it didn't have the square through in it to, to, to get in. It was a little bit different, but 
the routine was called the chicken plucker. And when Bill Peters started to uh, educate other callers, uh, he found that this was a handy routine to teach new callers. I, I was just, call. it, you know, it's sort of like when Janet was talking about it this morning about she really likes specifics. I, I'm a real story person and I want to know exactly why something originated. And I was just curious if there was some, some rhyme or reason to it. But I mean, obviously it's a referral to the it's, little bit. It's very simple. It's, it's just a dance routine uh, that was called that way and later was used to uh, teach callers. Okay. I just, it doesn't quite answer my question, but yeah. <laughs> it, 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 bring, it brings to mind the phrase that uh, um, truth is stranger than fiction because fiction has to make sense. Yeah. Well, I mean, I just thought, you know, maybe some farmer that had a chicken farm or something had come up with, the, you know, kind of thing. I just, I don't know. I just like knowing why. <clears throat> I, I, I just try to look and find the link so you can download it for yourself. Yeah, I'm looking for it myself. Uh, I know we put it in one of the recent articles, but I can't find it. But yeah, as Guido was saying, it was back in the, well, it was the very late 40s, early 50s, when traditional dancing was, or traditional square dancing was that the, the caller or the prompter would get up and they would do routines. And they would be fixed routines. So and it's basically and just a nick. A nick you'll have to, you're going to have to let people finish. Sure. Okay. Um, those routines, everyone was assigned a specific name. So if you knew if, if they, the dance was being called and the dance was the little red hen, you would have this routine. And if the dance was uh, chicken in the corn or crows in the corn, you would have this, this sequence in it. Uh, when they did the, the chicken plucker routine, as Guido said, how it is now is not the way it was originally released. The, the choreographic sequence was a little different, but the, it was very, very similar. And that was the first named recording of the chicken plucker. But that sequence had been around for a few years before that. Okay. Um, the person that did the first recording uh, is, is given most of the attributions. But the chicken plucker, a lot of it is named mainly because there are named sequences. And when you talk about um, a sequence or a name, one of the common phrases was chicken in a bread pan picking up dough. Because that was filler. Chicken plucker is a name that follows right into that because of the way it is when it was delivered is a right and left through and dive through and pass through and a right and left through and dive through and pass through. And you could do, do that over and over again. Um, you had sequences like dip and dive, which would be the outs and the ins and the ins and the outs. So chicken plucker was the name that stuck to it because it fell into that rhythm, it fell into that time, and it fell into that sequence of that time. Uh, are you having any luck finding that, Guido? I can't find it on my uh, computer. In, yeah. in, the, in, the yeah. chat, in the chat, there is a link. Yeah, thank you. Oh. Yeah. This reminds me of the question about uh, why, why do, in the United States anyway, why do we call each of those dance segments a tip? And there's a story yeah. that oh, people, that everybody's heard at this point, which is, oh, the, there was a tip jar and you put money in it until the guy would play again or whatever. I don't believe that because yeah. nobody had that story until relatively recently. And I think it's a completely made, I think the real answer is we'll never know. And that people just invented this story very recently and the story seems like it makes sense and everybody's like, oh, that must be the answer. But I, but personally, I don't buy it. Well, if, if you remember, Chris, I don't know if, if you've seen that, but a while back, I wrote an article on the origin of Yellow Rock. And it basically went to the traditional square dance was the thing that was done and it went up when all everybody was migrating west, when the gold, gold strikes happened, they went up and a Yellow Rock was normally done with the corner and the way it worked is when they were panning for gold somebody made a strike the areas around were taken and what would happen is what they would find of course is a yellow rock and the person that found the strike they, they, they usually ran along a stream or they ran this way but it was the corners that always got the bad sites 
So when it came back, they would have the big hoot nanny, the big dance, or the town dance. The person that found the yellow rock would buy a round for everybody, but they would also give a yellow rock to the people that were on the corner sites that didn't get. And with that rock, they could go to the land manager and they would get first choice of the sites on the next thing. So the yellow rock was a celebration. It was there. It was a hug. Oh, thank you very much. It was all these kinds of things. And it was a long story and it made absolute perfect sense. And then at the end of it, and for those of you that have followed this around, it's a good story, but I just made all of this up mm -hmm. off the top of my head. And it had a lot of people brought right into it going, as Chris was saying, a lot of these stories and a lot of these histories as to why things are as they are, I actually heard that story being told as the true origin of Yellow Rock. I know it's not because I made that story up myself and I wasn't here when it started. There's a lot of stories about why it's called Yellow Rock. There's a lot of stories about why things are called the way they are. And as, as Chris says, we may never know the truth, but doesn't make, make it any worse. The story is still good. What, what is it that you guys call it a tip in, in Australia again? They call it a bracket. A bracket. I, yeah. I like that. I like that better. I was trying to remember what it was. So I think I'm going to start calling it that. I, I think I'm not sure. So I'll make this one up too. I think it goes back to um, when callers were calling it festivals, you had a certain slot, a time slot or a bracket, which was your performance time. And that was a patter call and a singing call. And a bracket might be a patter call, singing call. It might be two singing calls. It might be one pattern, two singing calls. It might be whatever it was, depending on what the program was. But that was the bracket because you were in between these time frames. So that was the bracket you were calling in. And that phrase just sort of picked up from there. That's the way it yeah, was explained. That, I have well, no idea if that's true or not. Be, be, well, before you even said that, that that's exactly what I assumed was, was going on. That's exactly the story I imagine must be where it came from. So it make, certainly makes sense. It, it's easier to explain. The, the reason I like it better is because uh, um, it's it's much more logical and believable and simpler than some uh, than than the, the tip story because you know pe people people know what a bracket is. Yeah. <laughs> now, by the way, uh, Michael, thank you for that. Lee Hessel is the name I was looking for. I don't know where I got John Vernon from, but they they sound very close. <laughs> <laughs> I know about tip and bracket because the first caller school that I did up in Canberra, um, a few new callers in the area and, and, and uh, I was talking about, okay, so we're going to talk about doing a tip. Okay, so I, when, when you have a tip for square dancing, and then I talk about the patter call and I talk about the singing call. And we went on and one of the other callers finally asked Alan, he says, when is he going to give us this tip? I've been waiting to write it down. And, you know, it, it never occurred to me that we were talking two completely different languages. I'm t saying tip, they're saying bracket. I say patter, they say hoedown. Um, you know, it, it, it all depends on where you are and where you're from. But oh, even, in, even in the United States, uh, hoedown and patter are known uh, synonyms. Yeah. Yeah. And the hoedown is the actual dance. It's the whole activity is you, you go to a hoedown. And the patter is the filler between that is to establish the rhythm of the dance or the rhythm of, of the routine that you're doing. That's where those come from. Now it's patter is the made up stuff and the singing call is the song. And as we learned today, very little of the made up stuff is actually made up. I know a lot of very, very good callers and some international callers that are only module callers. And if you look at a lot of um, A2, C level callers, they're not only modular callers, they're written down cue card reading callers because there's just way too much stuff to remember. The, uh, um, at the, at the, at the uh, at challenge levels that, um, well, of course, okay, so there's, there's people who call uh, sort of much more hardcore challenge material than um, 
than some other people. Um, so for example, um, there, there were uh, a couple of clubs in my area when I was learning to dance that would, uh, where the callers claimed that they were teaching them C1. The, the people that I hung out with were sort of much more hardcore and, uh, der and derisively referred to that as A4. But the, the, the truth of the matter is, and I even saw this happen once or twice, if those so-called C1 dancers from those other clubs try to go to an actual C1 dance put on by an, uh, you know, uh, a headliner from the National Challenge Convention, um, like you know, Lee Coppin or somebody, they, they last about, they don't even make it three minutes into the tip and they're ready to leave because they're just what they learned is like so far below the standard of uh, what they're going to have to dance in terms of difficulty level. And yeah. the, so challenge callers generally uh, write the, write the material because there's really no way you can't, it, it's too complex for anybody to be able to site call for very much you're not going to be able to do a, a whole dance that way or anywhere anywhere close to it. And, and if, if, if you can do that, then the dancers are just going to feel, look, this is just not challenging enough. And, and moreover, the, the, the standard that I learned is that you write these, you, you write your material. So I might spend an hour writing a card that I'm going to call and that call, that's going to last about a minute worth of choreography. And I can never use it again because all the dances at that level were taped, and uh, uh, you know there was a huge network of uh, uh, everybody was passing the tapes around because most people didn't have a caller. You, you know, there's only so many challenge callers to go around, and most dancers are just dancing in a basement group with a bunch of people they got together from the surrounding 75 miles, and there's no caller, and they're just doing these tapes. So you can't uh, you can't even reuse your Use your, you know, you write them, they take forever to write. They're beautiful little works of art. You call them and that's it. They're done because you, you think you're going to go across, uh, you know, think you're going to go across the country or something and, and uh, use that material again. When you get there, what you're going to discover is that the dancers recognize the material because they've been practicing that exact material because it was on a tape of the dance on the East Coast. Yeah. And uh, then, the, and of course, then they're not going to be happy. Like, what, we're not good enough for you to write material for? So the, uh, um, you know, that's why that, uh, that, that's why that stuff gets written. It, it's just not tractable to do it any other way. There's, there's an old adage about square dance calling. Once you become a caller and you're calling for a club on a regular basis and you've developed your skills and you're, you're now doing some site calling and modules and everything else, when you start at the basic level, every hour you put on the floor, is at least two hours of practice and preparation. When you get to mainstream, you add an hour. When you get to plus, you add an hour. When you get to advanced, you add an hour. When you get to A2, you add another hour. And that's your planning, practice, and preparation phase. So you call an hour in advance, you're doing five hours of preparation beforehand because there's just so much material. And as Chris said, hey, at, at was it C3, you're calling for a one minute routine is an hour worth of work. Nowadays, it's possible, now that, now that we have computers, it's possible to do it a little bit faster. It's not actually that much faster than doing it by hand. But um, if you want some kind of not very good sequences that are just kind of perfunctory, well, I'll use the calls which is at, at those levels, that's just like, yes, yeah, so what? You didn't do anything yet. But if you want to, if you want to write filler material like that uh, and you uh, use the computer program, you can crank stuff like that out pretty quick. But if you want really clever stuff that, that, that uses the concepts and fractions and everything uh, in the, you know, tremendously interesting ways, though that takes a long time to, to puzzle through. Mm. No, absolutely. I've, I've just put the original chicken plucker in the chat. Yes, thank you. Where are we at? Um,
That's out of sets in order in 1957, the October issue. Yeah, Bill Shimkus and um, Lee Hassel. Oh, where are we here? Yeah, what was it? There you go. So if you do something like, um, Here's challenge. Okay. Heads lead to the right, veer to the left, and circulate. Wheel and deal in the quarter, more boys trade, bend the line, star through, pass through, wheel and deal centers, wheel around right, move through, veer left, circulate twice, wheel and deal in the quarter, more boys trade, bend the line, pass through, all man left, right, left, right. You know, and you're going, well, what is that? Is it okay, with that wheel and deal, we'll throw people off because normally if you're getting into that kind of a situation, You've got an outside pivot, but now you've got an inside pivot for the wheel and deal, or you, uh, as Don Beck says, calling a wheel and deal from, or three wheel and deals in a row, if you set up your formation correctly, doing something like that. Yes, that is challenging. It's not challenge. It's basic. It's challenging. Yes, it's basic. Um, you'd be an idiot if you wanted to call something like that. Um, for, well, unless, for, unless you do it at a special session, some yeah. dancers like, you know, they'll, you can advertise a special session. We're going to do some, some weird, difficult, tricky, tricky. I'm, you, you know, normally when, when you get up there and call, you know, you're not trying to trick anybody, but okay, there are some dancers who would think that's fun and you can do a special gimmicky session on it. They'll come yeah. here between one and two. We're going to trick you for an hour and, you know, you, you may or may not be amused, but you, at least you know what you're, you're in for. Um, where, where, where I have a big issue sometimes is I'm, I'm a firm believer of using extended application. You may not teach them immediately, but if you teach right, when your dancers graduate mainstream, they can dance all standard and most general extended applications. You'd be able to dance a recycle with girls on the outside of a right hand wave or boys on the outside or girls on the outside of a left hand wave because it's an ends and a centers movement. Uh, you'd be able to dance it. To me, that's, standard mainstream dancing with a couple of extended applications on. In a lot of places, that's considered plus or difficult. Where I find problems is callers will call material, they'll pull up an extended application, for instance, um, boy, boy, girl, girl lines doing flutter wheels and reverse flutter wheels. And it's pulled out once a year when they teach flutter wheel and they never see it again, except on a summer, you know, dance by definition workshop where they'll see it once during the workshop and they never see it again. And it, it doesn't become part of the dancing repertoire until they actually get up into, you know, a higher level of plus or advanced dancing where that is pretty commonplace dancing. And yeah, we it's a, you know, and we a challenge if you did yeah. those kind of, uh, that kind of APD stuff, they won't, they won't blink. They won't think it's terribly interesting either. They'll just be like, yeah, okay, so what? <laughs> you know, like for instance, um, even doing something semi asymmetrical will, will cause blinking. But, you know, you can do very, very interesting stuff. You know, we talked in Janet's session about doing swing throughs or working with, you know, how many, how many people are needed to do a swing through? You know, the, the answer is a minimum of three. You know, so I, I'll you... tell you a, a funny story uh, from uh, the the first time I called <clears throat> this plus uh, a plus dance for a uh, quote unquote regular club because the club that I originally was calling for was a kind of unique uh, hot shot uh, bunch of uh, young people and uh, and 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 my experience. Uh, at, at the time of this story uh, was really just in calling for them and people and people like that. And, and so, you know, you, you send me out to a, a regular old club and I, you know, I really don't know what I'm doing. Uh, and so I, I, I remember I got out there and I was trying to be careful not to call anything hard or anything, of course. Um, Cause I mean, I, I wasn't a complete idiot, but 
Uh, but I called, uh, I just called a, uh, um, I think it was like a left square through, something mm -hmm. like that. And nothing tricky, no, 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 nobody out of place or anything. It was just something left. It wasn't, I don't think it was left swing through, but I think it was left, probably left square through. And the, uh, <clears throat> and the, and the floor had trouble with it. Now this is a club that's been dancing, you know, for longer than I was alive. And everybody was always having a great time there every week. And they're not a bad club and whatever, but, uh, but, uh, but I noticed they had a little bit of trouble. And uh, afterwards, at, 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 when the dance was over, I, I, of course, I brought a bunch of these um, young kids from, from my club. I, I'm calling it my club. I was not the primary caller there. Um, but uh, from, from our group out there to, uh, and, and for them, this was also a big experience because they were not used, I had to warn them. I'm like, look, okay, when you go to this thing, it's going to be like a lot of old people. And they're like, you mean like 30? And I'm like, no, no, really old. And the, the whole experience was, uh, was a thing. Anyway, we're, we're at, uh, we're at the, the diner uh, uh, hanging out, uh, just a bunch of us uh, after the dance. And, and uh, one, of the, one of the dancers uh, from my group came over and she said, you called out one thing there. And, and, I, and, and, and the, like the, so many squares broke down. And I said, yeah, I don't know what happened. And she said, well, I was in my square and I'm like trying to do the left square through. And I'm like trying to give my hand to the, to the person in front of me. And she's just going, oh, no, dear, we don't do lefts. That's not unusual these days. Yeah. Well, it, this was it's, it's very unfortunate, but I've heard that story and variations of that story time and time again over the last 15 years. Or yeah, years. this was 1983. <laughs> I was doing a dance in New England in, I think it was the early 90s, and it was a plus, plus club. And it was, you know, told me it was a full plus. I said, okay, great. Is this easy plus? And I said, no, no, full plus plus. And I started calling and my, my standard opening up for a plus would be something like Alaman left turn partner right to a wrong way bar. Complete chaos. Oh, we don't, we don't do wrong way bars here. Okay, fine. Fair enough. Alaman left box the net, right and left. Oh, we don't do box the net here. This is a full plus club. That they just didn't dance that there. They they chose not to do that, but they danced. You know, they wanted relay to do see and coordinate and track to and all that over and over and over again in the material from standard positions. That was full plus where it was. What a concept of full plus is different for everybody. Um, a, good <laughs> yeah, a good example is is tr try and follow this in your mind. Uh, Okay, so let's just have the head ladies chain three quarters and the side boy courtesy turn. So I know I've got the head men at home, I've got sides in line three. Um, and roll that lady a half sachet. So I've got my line is girl, girl, and a boy, and on the other side is girl, girl, boy. Okay, lines of three, pass through, um, two, boy, two by one, wheel and deal, put the boys in the middle. Centers pass through, two by one, pass to the center, Center girls touch a quarter. Yeah, Alaman left. Sure. Okay. Now, if you looked at that, what level is that? Is it, well, I think you're just using basic calls, but of course, uh, who's going to be? It's actually mainstream because it's got a pass to the center in it. Okay. But but that's it. Everything else is not only basic. It's um, what. Fifth night, sixth night, basic. Mm -hmm. And yet that would be considered extremely hard. Now, if I go back to 1950, you know, couple number one, bow and swing, all four ladies up to the middle of the remaining, all four ladies, chain three quarters, the side boy only go ahead, all four ladies, chain across, all four ladies, chain three quarter, turn your partner. Circle to the left, round and go, back and make your set. Just the head ladies, chain three quarters inside, boy, turn them. Line of three, go forward and back. Line of three, pass through. Put the boy in first, do a wheel and deal. Centers pass through and split the outside two. While the centers touch a quarter, boys turn around. Now a man left your corner, do the right and left front. We're talking 1940s prompting, no teaching, no nothing. This is standard, basic level, going out to a fun hoedown, old time square dance. 
you can find some uh, some uh, uh, videos of uh, people doing uh, old timey directional calling mm -hmm. like that. It's not even that. I mean, I call it old timey because it's not what we do today. But it was not. You're you know you're exactly right. It was not that long ago, and and I think it's uh, it, it's a shame that we can't. Uh, you know, the way that we've taken the activity uh, is uh, you know so that, such that we can't do those kind of things anymore. Yeah. And, and there's nothing wrong with not being able to do it. My, my big bane or my big concern is we have rushed the dancers to plus by forgetting how to teach dancing. We have catered to the vocal majority, which was actually the vocal minority, on what should and shouldn't be taught and what should and shouldn't be danced by calling to the good dancers and leaving everybody else behind and had people picking up the left behinds and teaching them what they knew because nobody else, they weren't good enough for the good callers. So they started teaching simple, which is nobody taught them how to teach or how to call. And they developed their own situation. And it, it, it's a never ending scenario of we're getting less and less and less and less and less capable. Yeah. We're modifying to a short term attention span or the sound bite audience rather than actually dancing for the social activity, going out and having fun. And who cares how long it takes? We're out there having fun every week. Um, Helen Tron said from Sweden is a classic example of doing it right, you know? Yeah. She, she apologized. I, I, I've only been, I'm a new caller. I've only been teaching basics. We're, we're getting through the basics. We've only been dancing as a club a year, once a week. And she's got the whole bloody town asking her to call square dancing and getting them to get that. I mean, the whole town, whole age groups wanting to get to dance because it's a social activity, but they're having fun and she's doing it right. She's learning to call. She doesn't have a lot of support where she is, but yeah. she's doing it right because they're having fun and dancing and learning and expanding and growing. Whereas and, and it, our market today is, okay, we got 20 dancers in. Oh, great. Good student class. Let's get them through to plus. Great. We graduated 20 dancers. We kept two that went to the plus club. That's wrong. We've lost 18 dancers because yeah, they've had their snapshot. They've had their sound bite. Let's move on to the next challenge. Let's, let's, let's try you know, pancake flipping for the next activity this next summer. We've done square dancing. Now let's go do something else. Well, I think there's two things going on there. Part of that is the, the way we present, uh, you know, what classes it is that we're going to do, what dances do we offer, and, you know, what, what, what opportunities uh, do we have for people to have all the different kinds of fun that, that you can do with all the different kinds of choreography. There, there, that's a big problem. But there's also a, a societal change I've noticed uh, and I noticed this on the college campuses that the uh, that it's the that it's the kids that want to rush through things, and it's it's not that uh, it's not that somebody wouldn't spend the time with them. It's that they want to get they want to they want to check this off the box, and they want to move on to another activity. So there's there's some amount of different expectations for what what people are looking for, you know. And of course, there's a major changes in how far people are willing to travel. With, yeah. with traffic being so That's bad now compared to that. What I, I was talking about, we had an activity which was fun, social, everybody would mm -hmm. want to do it. I mean, and they would stick to it. They would bring it in. They might, if they were young, they'd come in, they'd enjoy it. They, you know, have their own little groups that they would dance to and do the hoots and the hollers and all this other kind of stuff. And then they might drop out of it for a couple of years when they get a family or they might stick in if, if the club that has a babysitting service or something like that. And then they'd come back to it because it was a family thing. It was an entertaining thing. It was worth it. But the, the vocal minority, because all our dancers, that whole society of square dancers is now in their 70s, 80s and 90s. They haven't recruited to anybody that isn't in their 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s in the last mm -hmm. 20 years. And we've got this big generational gap of, you know, three, four percent of our square dance audience is between 25 and 50. And then we get into the younger people, which say, right, I want a sound bite. Oh, look at these dancers. They're great. We've got young people coming in. It's great. We'll rush them through. We'll do this. 
And you're right, they're after the sound bite, they're after the, 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 the thrill and the adrenaline, and then they go on to the next adrenaline rush. Mm -hmm. like bungee jumping with square dances, you know, whatever, whatever the next adrenaline rush is. And we've lost a whole society, and they're not going to come back to it because, as you said, they, they learned in a society of tick the box, fire and forget, move on to the next. Eventually, eventually they uh, come back, but by the time they do that, they what they're coming back to is uh, probably bridge. Yeah, and it's not what they left. It's not what they remember. Yeah, the, 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 I, I notice a lot of them. A lot of the, a lot of the people gravitate to go playing bridge. <laughs> the, the the most scary comment I ever had was I was doing a. Um, no, I'm sorry, I wasn't dancing. I was I went to a dance. We we used to do these summer dances in a park in Ottawa. And all the callers would go up and support and everything else. And part of it was you'd call on the theater, you do your demonstration, and you get the whole crowd on the open lawns and, you know, get them all dancing. It was a lot of fun. And uh, one of the callers, no names, no pack bill, got up there. And he was on the program this week. And then there was, you know, all the community things. And there was a group there, which was one of the uh, old folks homes. And I mean, old folks homes, a retirement group for line dancing. And it was very, very simple. It was very basic, like step behind, step, turn, or walk three, turn around, back three, you know. And they were doing it, walking. They're having a marvelous time. And it was, but it was definitely old. There were some up there with their canes. There was two on the, on the stage with their walkers, but they were line dancing. This was an activity for the older folks. And then the caller got up, and they got the square of the dancers up on the floor. And, yep, they were all older folks. And he started calling. And one of the line dancers that I happened to be standing next to out in the party said, oh, good, look at that. I was wondering what I was going to get be able to do when I got too old to line dance. Oh, God. <laughs> that, that was a summary. That was the most horrifying comment about the state of square dancing that I ever heard. And, it, and when I looked up, absolutely right. The, the scariest thing for a young, Chris, you do a lot of calling for young dancers. What would you say that how they would receive, um, you know, let's just say a, an 85 year old caller who calls a moderately basic level, not a bad singer, not a great singer, calls pattern, but they want to recruit new dancers, gets up and does a presentation in the mall, and he's going to use, I don't know, grand funk rap as his pattern call. And he's going to do Miley Cyrus's Wrecking Ball as his singing call. And his floor of dancers is, you know, the youngest lady is 60 years old and sprightly. The oldest guy is, let's say, 75, all in matching uniforms with tunics and frou-frous on and, and crinolines. And you see them up the stage. What are the young people going to think about that? Well, most of the most of the calling I did for young people was a while ago, but I'm I'm sure that some of the same things are uh, are still exactly true, and and people would uh, even back then would ask you know these same questions, and the uh, I'll tell you uh, one, one anecdote is I remember um, uh, we danced in a in a pretty big hall, and uh, we would have uh, you know ten squares or something in there. Uh, all young people, this was on a college campus in the student union building. And uh, so we're going great guns in there and everybody's having a good time and dancing like you would imagine young people to dance. And the, um, and, and we, we liked being in there a lot because the, the door to that hall is open and it's in the student union building. So there's a million students wandering by who can you know, hear and see what's going on in there. And of course, some of them will come over and poke their heads in the door. And I cannot count the number of times when uh, they would, when I would see some uh, some young girl standing by the door and looking in there, and I could hear them talking, and the, and I heard this exact conversation more than once. Hey, that looks like fun. Boy, they're having some fun. And then followed by, I can't see myself dressing up like that. And then they turn around and leave. Um, the thing I look at is it's not just the dress. There's nothing wrong with the costumes. They're dated, but if you want to attract young people dancing, you don't put 60 and 70 year olds on the floors to a caller trying to call music of today that just doesn't suit his voice, doesn't suit the style, doesn't suit the activity, what it's representing. Sure. 
you know, it yeah. just doesn't. I, 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 my, my experience was a similar one. Um, when I was a caller in Germany, I called for the Schwarzwald Hansers, and it was a Canadian um, German square dance club. And that year, I believe it was 1982 or 83, I can't remember exactly, but Canada was the host nation for UNICEF, but the host country was Germany. So they had a big, 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 big festival in um, ha was it Hamburg. Yeah, I think it was Hamburg. Could have been Hamburg or Heidelberg. Can't, can't remember exactly. I think it was Hamburg. But we went up there and UNICEF was paying standard rate for entertainers. Now, um, most of you probably don't know who Peter Maffei is. Uh, some of you might. And, and Roger Whitaker was another one. These were guests. The, these were performers. And there was uh, Roger Whitaker, Mel Wilkerson, Peter Moffat. And, you know, everybody got paid exactly the same, all your expenses and $750 for the, the gig, except for the big, big show performances that they did later. But these are the little short things during the day. Our club was asked to come up. I was paid 750 Deutschmark, or sorry, $750, which was 1,500 Deutschmarks at the time. And the club was paid 1,500 Deutschmarks at the time. Great. I figured, wow, we're going to be there. Somebody's going to pay me $750 to go and call a dance. And they're paying for the travel expenses. And they're paying for the hotel. And they're bringing the square dancers. And they're paying the club another $750. Wow, we're going to have our work cut out for us. We got up there to the dance. And it turned out I had 15 minutes. <laughs> that was it. That was the whole show. 15 minutes. Uh, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. I, 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 I know people who have done uh, reported uh, very similar experiences. And they, of course, they were yeah, blown away by the amount of money and the short amount happened, of time. <laughs> we had a great time. We put on a great show. We had a lot of fun and, you know, just basically hand it up. And then we went back to the hotel that we were staying in and they had two dining rooms. One was closed because there wasn't a lot of people there. And the other one was full dining room. It was separated by a partition. And we were so disappointed that we only got 15 minutes, we decided, well, we asked the, um, the staff, can we use the other dining room? Because a beautiful park gate floor, all the tables were pushed off and, and have a square dance there. And they, and they let us do it. So we set up the equipment and started dancing. So we got two squares, we're dancing. The patio doors are open on the window to, to let the, the breeze come in. And the door to the restaurant opened a bit and then it opened more and then it opened more and the patio doors were coming in. And probably in about, within an hour, we had close to 20 squares on the floor. Um, the teaching would, was being translated by one of my dancers because my German was absolutely atrocious and it still is. But we were just having a good fun dance where we would dance and show and then we'd have the community. And what happened was in, in Heidelberg, everybody was looking for, yeah, it must have been Heidelberg, everybody was looking for a place to go square dancing because they got in and they had fun. Oh, that looks like fun. And it just, it grew from there, taking that advantage of, it's a venue. I know a lot of callers that won't go to a bar or won't go to a club or won't do a venue to call a square dance because they serve alcohol. Mm. Well, that, that's your choice. I will, because that's where the dancers are at the moment. You may not drink at a square dance, but there's nothing wrong with having a social activity and serving alcohol. You do it at all your square dance New Year's parties. I'd rather have a, as Chris said, I'd rather have a, a hall full of dancers in blue jeans and, and running shoes having a good time than I would having one square of lampshades and frou-frous with sour faces. I can see yep. you getting a bit tired there, Guido. Bye bye. <laughs> no worries. I'll see you next next week. Yeah. And by the way, keep your comments coming. Anyway, we're just having general chit chat here. If anybody wants to talk about something or join in, on, you know, this isn't just a, a me conversation. No, I think I'm I'm going to head off too. I've got some stuff I have to do still. No worries. Okay. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. How you doing there, John? Yeah, I'm doing fine. Um, I might head off too because there's some whales out there calling me. Oh, oh that's right. You got the beach house. The whales yeah, there was a channel in front of you. 
a new calf was born the uh, last week, and so that mother and calf will be here for at least three months. Wow, where are you? Victor Harbour in South Australia. It's about an hour southeast of uh, Adelaide. Okay. Norm normally, I would have absolutely no idea where these things were, but I was watching some uh, 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 special on uh, whatever public TV the other day where they were talking about the, uh, uh, the four, four billion years of uh, Australia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So they're yeah. running around visiting all kinds of different sites, you know. You have to see if you want to explain it in terms that Americans can understand, John, what you first have to do is you have to get them to know where Adelaide is. So if I'm talking to Chris, for example, to listen to his accent, so you know roughly where he's from in the States, and you say, Chris, do you know where Adelaide is in Australia? Down the bottom. And Chris, by his silence, would say no. Oh, 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 oh! Uh, rough. I know where I know where it's not, and I've seen it on the map. Okay, so it's roughly on the bottom, on the left-hand side of Australia. Yeah, yeah, that that tracks with what I was thinking. Yeah. So if you're in Adelaide, what you do is you go up, and now to put it in terms you can understand, you pull down left on County Twelve, turn left on the one lane gravel road, go sixteen hundred miles. <laughs> Park in the yard, beware the dog, wipe your feet on the mat, knock three times and bring your wallet with you to pay for the dance. And Chris will find you, John. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knows Ayers Rock in the middle of Australia will come straight down you hit Adelaide. Ayers <laughs> Rock? Oh, how, how politically incorrect. <laughs> Uluru. <laughs> uh, it, 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 Stick it has, to Ayers Rock, it's nicer. It has yeah. got to the point of ridiculous. Like I said. Anyway, I'll say bye. Thank you, you all. Take care. Mark, Michael, Marie. Hi, Linda. You're still with us? I, I haven't contributed much. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just noticed that uh, Mark is still recording. I thought he would have stopped recording after the session, but apparently the entire gab is being recorded today. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and still here listening. I just have to duck in and out because of. No um, worries. Yeah. You got Paul from Vancouver and John's here. Larry's still here, or at least they're, they're logged on. Whether or not they're there, I'm not sure. They may have gone to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think I might head off because I've got some things I want to do too. Yeah, no worries. Oh. I'm just going to ask if, if anybody has anything else. Oh, hi, Larry. Columbus See you next Rock. week. If if nobody has anything else they want to look at or anything they specifically want to look at, we, we can. No. Mel, I did email the the one with the flow down um, from the Facebook. Okay. Uh, I'll have a look yeah. at that. Like I said, I've been, I've been really, really tied up with work and everything. Yeah. Um, so I haven't had, probably haven't had a chance to get to it as yet. Yeah, but okay. There's a basket somewhere and I'll have a look yeah. at it. Because cool. I love love the comments. I love the feedback. Yes. Any feedback's good. No worries. My pleasure. Okay. Take okay. See you all next week. Bye. Take yeah, care, I guess I'll okay. end the meeting. Then. Yeah. All right. Take care, Mel. See you next Take week. Care, Thank you much. Mark, if you're still there, thanks for recording. I guess when I sign out, it'll start doing its thingy. So. Catch you all later. Okay. See ya. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thanks for putting it on. <laughs>